Why do we still count down? Mm-hmm. No, they must count down. Why am I going to count Can't down? I take liberties when it's guests that I know? Start with gay handshake. Ah. Reach out to me, ah. Teddy. What do you want from me, Teddy? <laughs> Anything. <laughs> 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 Hasht- hashtag no Teddy. Oh my gosh. Uh, pen and pen. Uh, we haven't sat in a while, and I appreciate you coming to sit with me. And yeah, no, I can't complain about the people I work with. <laughs> no, I will complain a little bit mm-hmm. uh, and try and make it a compliment, even though it's not for me. Okay. Um, Amp Studios in Newtown has been doing really well, I think. Shut up. And the the master classes they've been hosting, of which I was one of the people that hosted one of them. Oh, nice. The number of high profile guests and and podcasters they've had here mm-hmm. from all fresh to all Boo to the scent twins you know the work that to slim no no uh are doing mm. the work they're doing is so amazing and obviously the team abo abo si mbali swaggy all the guys okay mm. uh, etc it's really dope but but yes but however it means now i struggle to have like a filming slot here but <sighs> comments <laughs> Pelangit manje is like more important. Bang a maslay queen. Bang a maslay queen. That comment. Shout out to Amt and shout out to the team at Amt. They look at your DMs like this and go, ugh, ugh. Uh, ugh. How, how have you been? <laughs> I'm good, dog. I'm I'm great. I'm great. It's been a while though. We 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 need to actually step up in terms of recording pen and pen. Me and you. Yeah. What would you like ideally? Twice a month. Uh, once a week. I don't know. I don't know if we have the capacity to do once a week. Sure. But maybe twice a month. I okay. think. You know, cause Whose fault is it mine? It's your fault. I'm meant to take lead. Yeah. Like Diddy. And you'll be... <laughs> Meet me. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. Huh? Uh, we, we're here to discuss a very serious topic. Uh, uh, but yeah. b- before that, because it's you, I'll take liberties. Shout out to DJ Sbu yeah. on landing the Radio 2000 Breakfast Show gig. Shout out, uh, shout out, man. Shout out, shout out. Uh, me well, and him... Cleone, and- is he with... DJ Cleo as well. cleo has got his own segment. Oh, he's going to okay. be doing, I think, Eskaleni. Yeah. Uh, he's got a segment there, I think, for okay. music. So, when I've been speaking about him getting back on radio for a while. I remember even when we had May Rest in Peace, Eusebius Makaiser. Mm. He was speaking about how he misses radio. Um, the idea the idea that they had of creating this radio Premier League or Super League with himself, mm. Thibaut Touch. I think Gareth Cliff, DJ Fresh, and Robert, was Robert Marau involved, which never eventualized. That would have mm. been really dope. Thibaut Touch, uh, tried Touch, Touch HD, I Something think, like that. didn't work. Mm. Massive Metro, unfortunately, didn't land the way it was supposed to land. And I know Osbu ended up with a lot of debt. Mm. Uh, Garrett Cliff and Cliff Central, unfortunately, also, eh, yeah. Touch and go. So, Spoo's back on radio. Who knows? Maybe Mac G will go back to radio. Didn't uh, the say something along the lines of radio is dead? Who? Lo, Bab. Bab, Bab. Bab, Spoo says, Bab, Yeah. Spoo says, Hey. Something along those lines. I remember reading something or hearing something on the on the streets. No, the streets are dangerous because oh, they, they, they might lie. So, Spu has always been a, a champion of radio has serious reach. Something that he said to That's me. That's a like, fact. That's an He's like, fact. you jump on radio and like immediately you're streaming to like 1 million, 2 million, 5 million. I don't know the, the listenership of Ukozi because it was on Ukozi at some point. Yeah. And Ukozi immediately. Is Ukozi not the biggest in Africa, I think? It's debatable. But uh, I've actually tried to research it. It's debatable. But well, shout out to DJ Spoo, man. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to try and straddle radio and podcasting, like mm. Sol Penduga, who's on Kaya FM and Podcast and Show. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've got Cizu Mpofu Walsh, Dr. Cizu Mpofu Walsh, who straddles TV mm. with SAPC Unfiltered and podcasting as well. So we'll see. But I know he's hella excited. No, man. Shout he's out to DJ Spoo. Shout hella out to DJ Spoo. Congrats. Congrats, good man. Anyone you want to give a shout out to? Anyone um, you want to greet? Besides our kids that we came to speak about today. Who do I want to shout out? Who do I want to greet? Mm. I think I'll do the shout outs at the end. If if uh, you remember. Yeah, if I remember. Because then now I'll have to actually just be... No, so is it clean in. Let's I jump, in. Want, Let's I jump wanna, straight into I wanna, the topic. I want to and... go through the points. We might not get through all of them, but I want to yeah. raise them. The, the topics or the, the points I w- I'd like us to talk about. Sure. The idea of raising weak kids while you have good intentions. Okay. Private versus public school. Yeah. Single sex versus co ed schools. Mm-hmm. Um, English versus Afrikaans schools. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the future of education? And then co parenting versus single parenting. These are loaded topics that I'm yeah. I'm passionate about. Yeah. But just to give a bit of background, we've been watching a lot of schoolboy rugby. Yo, bro. Uh, North State 
toernooi uh, by Afrikaanse Seens Hoorskool in Pretoria. Yeah, that was two weeks ago. Um, and then we were at the King Edward School, Kez Easter Festival yeah. and the St. John's, John's College. Festival, yeah. And then also you also went to the St. Stidians. St. Stidians, shout out the guys at Saints, yeah. Uh, St. Stidians is where you used to teach mm. as well and St. John's College is where your lighties go to school. Yeah. Uh, King Edward School is the school that I wanted Nkunzi to go to at some point yeah. in his life. The very controversial because I'd, I'd like my boys to go to to Kez. To Kez? Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's the that's one of the backdrops where we were watching rugby and we were seeing some of these boys. And I need to send mm. a shout out to these boys, uh, some of them specifically because we we met their parents. Yeah. Uh, Simpiwe Moyo at uh, King mm. Edward School, the flower half, the number yeah. ten. Uh, Mbuso that you coached as well, who's the sure. fullback. Siposi uh, Mnebelele, the captain and oh. the hooker who made SA schools last captain, year. My captain, my captain. Yeah, there's other boys, man. Kutadzo, yes. the captain at, at JP Boys. Well, in the um, same team, there's Sam Brewe. Uh, coach there's Sam. as well. There's sure. Regan McGurk. He's also the scrum half. So there's a lot of guys. There's, um, uh, 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 name escapes me now. But there's a lot of boys. Lot you of co- boys, you lot coached of boys. them when they were 12. I coached them when they were still babies. Sure. There's also the right wing, I think you mentioned as well. Uh, Jamal. Oh, no, Ch- Chinari. Chinari. Chinadu, Chinadu, the, the the flank. Sure, you know. So there's a lot of boys that actually are doing a lot of things. You coached them when they were twelve. I did coach them when they were sure. when they were twelve. Now, now they now. fucking. Oh. Sir, are you sir? You know, but it's even even at Saints. Like I I look at Saints just to shout out uh, C A ten Chris Anderson, um, but I coached most of those guys. I would I would sure. have to name the whole team from Resima Resima Corsa, uh, who's the head boy at J P Boys. Yeah, uh, he's the eighth man. Yeah, and he plays lock as well. And Kutadzo, I forget his surname. He's the number 13 and the captain. Mm. And Wandi Silas Melane, uh, who I think, I don't know if he's playing for the Bulls or he's moved to the Stormers. One of uh, the Center. But he was at JP Boys along with Hachiva Daimani, yeah. who's at the Stormers. But uh, Wandi Silas' younger brother, I think Usane Elias Melan, is the, the number 15 at JP. Yeah, and then fine. there's a whole lot of other cooking boys. Mm. Cheswell Uyster at, at Newark Dievel. Mm. Yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd take the whole day to go through these I was, I was I was super excited. Uh, my partner's nephew plays for Northcliffe. Which was no actually Cliff High School. No Cliff High. Sure. You know, so that was that's actually a top, just that's a top co ed school in Joburg. Miguel. So oh Miguel. Mi- Miguel. Yeah, Miguel. You know. Um what's what's Miguel's name? Smith. Miguel Smith. So he's also another fire lighty. Sure. Just unfortunate that he goes to those schools that tend to not get looked at as sure. much as the others. Uh, we saw the McKenzie twins playing for Kingswood. Sure. Josh, you know, so, Josh and James McKenzie so, from Kingswood. So a, a lot of people <clears throat> might find this weird when we speak about school boys like this. Little boys. Little hashtag boys, no. You know, no dead. But like at at the end of the day, Tina, we knew these little kids from when they were young. Yeah. So watching them play primary school rugby into their high school rugby, watching them go from little boys and actually maturing and, you know, just... All the little tips that we'd give the the, the McKenzie twins when yeah, Josh get, and James McKenzie you know, played touch rugby with us. Gunter at Alp Macar as well. He's another boy whose father used to bring him to play touch rugby with us. So these are young kids that we actually have um, assisted on their journeys of becoming uh, men, yeah. and it's actually very humbling to see them. Uh, even once you speak to them post matric and some of the guys that are now in their mid twenties now we play touch with, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it's crazy when you think about, let's say, Uzugo Zote that I coached when he was still in primary school and now he's 24. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just like, geez, how old am I? You know. Damn, damn. I'm sorry. So the, the, back, the backdrop is that we were looking at these boys and Penson and I have always had wishes of being better fathers than our father was. Yeah. Um, very controversial, polarizing figure, Um Lodge. Yeah. May he rest in peace. Passed away February 2020. Um. And we look at the platform that we were given by our mother. I mean, mm. Umamsi is from Ikvugeni Township, yeah. uh, about 45 minutes from Ladysmith in KZN. My father's from Mpopomeni, the township of Howick in KZN. My mom managed to go from that township, half rural mm. space, mm. to Emadadeni Township where we were both born. Mm. Uh, my sister luckily was born in the Burbs. Mm. And she taught at Salanati High School in Lukshin, a section for Emadadeni. Mm but managed to get us into Newcastle High School, which was a really good school at the time. Um, and what we were exposed to with the rugby and the hockey and the choir and the marching band and the ensemble, that was really brilliant. And we wanted to do more for our kids. Mm. But in doing more, we didn't want to make the mistake of giving them too much and spoiling them. Mm. Um, because Umam, if she had things her way, we would have gone to St. Dominic's Academy, mm. which is a mm. private school in Newcastle. Mm. So we had a, a taste of struggle. Yeah. We'd visit our father in the township. Mm. We'd visit our family in, in 
township yeah, rural yeah. areas gom seeing uh etc we got to ex- we, we got a bit of grit training and our mom our parents weren't well off my mom wasn't well mm. off like that so we we lacked a lot of other things that the kids at our level got easily pocket money a huge lunch and those yeah, things and cheesy all those type of things yeah we wanted to give our kids the greatest exposure possible yeah but make sure that we also fa- put fire in their bellies mm. so that they have real grit and they're not these pansy soft private school soft cheek candy floss mm. fucking eating useless mm. kids mm. of mm. privilege mm. 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 private school no I, I wasn't linked to private school I was <laughs> yeah, saying yeah oh, Okay. <laughs> so so on the back of that we had a conversation at the yeah. rugby. Yeah. The idea of you and I might be raising weak kids. Yeah. Um even though we have great intentions and what that means to us. And if that's really going to be the case or m- maybe we're also wrong. But I don't know if you maybe want to start there on Kampe your boys and then I can speak <laughs> yeah, about Yeah, man. Some of uh, my yeah, you you said a lot. Just um I think when you speak about Ekvogen people and you say Ekvogeni township, even though that's what it's called, people have a certain mindset of what a township is. Yeah. And when Umamsi grew up there, we're talking about a place where there was no toilets, there was no running water. It was rural. You, it was rural. It was know. a village. So when we initially, as little kids, we were there, there wasn't flushing toilets. We used the bucket, bucket. system. Mm-hmm. You know, So those type of things, you guys need to understand where Sa- she Sa-Slala came from. Sasilala in a mud hut, by the way, yes. before they got an RTP. Yeah, so from yeah. where she came from to now living in the suburbs of Joburg, it's been such a incredible journey for her the question around raising weak kids um first and foremost you need to define what weak is yeah one because tina well me let me talk about myself umams used to say all the time you lazy and she says she's uh, raising a lazy child mm. but then the question of what was lazy to her sure. what was lazy to her was a person who doesn't make their bed and wash the dishes you know whereas to me i was like i'm getting all the marks you know i'm getting all the leadership um, roles at school. I'm doing everything in terms of that space and I'm outshining all the people that you say are hard workers because they polish their shoes on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know, so again, what she uses a metric for laziness is not what I saw at Escale. So when we look at raising weak kids, what is it that we are saying we want the kids to look like in order for them to be strong kids? You understand? So give me, I see... I did a video. Shout out to to myself and my channel. It's growing. Just plug myself. Stop in. sucking your ditty. <laughs> Stop sucking my what? Stop sucking my what? So, sorry to interrupt you, guest. Sorry. <clears throat> sorry for interrupting the guest. Stop sucking my what? Please carry on. Sir. <laughs> so I did a video about the uh, Peter Pan syndrome. You know, so the Peter Pan syndrome, just to cut it short, is for. It's, it's a syndrome where it speaks about an, a, a, an adult who is not taking on adult roles, accountability and responsibility, and they're still stuck in their childlike behavior. Mm. You know, So when it comes to how we are parenting, the question is, are we prepping our kids to get ready for the next stage of development? So if you look at umams, umams has spoiled us in many ways. <clears throat> and as a result, we never fully developed in those areas. Such as an example, let's say something from a domestic point, like ironing. You know, we never ironed. We never ironed. We never did our laundry. We never did our laundry. Even umams though we, did, did, we didn't have auntie. So we never yeah. grew up with auntie. Yeah, but umams he washed umams and she ironed. So in terms of, let's just and using she that. Mostly. You know, she, we, we never got to fully develop as maybe our peers who to this day like to iron their shirts mm. and, you know, do their own laundry. So from that domesticated side, we were never fully developed, mm. you know, or um, let's say... But we say, did a lot of gardening. We did a heck of a lot. Yeah, we did too much gardening. Yeah, we overdid the gardening. <laughs> we so, overdid the gardening, so it's you know. Spelling it up. So, so... The, the manly stuff we, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the no. Man, man, non-manly man, stuff. Man, manly men. So again, when it comes to kids not developing, mm. I look at a lot of... Um, mothers and how they they parent a lot of it is mother hen and all about protecting not understanding Uguti, you need to prepare your child for those next steps and those next things so my child then becomes too scared to go close the gate at night you know why because as he's gotten older i close the gate on his behalf you know and i'm not putting him in places where he's feeling a bit anxious feeling a bit nervous feeling a bit scared which is natural you know and then fighting through that and as a result he becomes weak and and he never outgrows a certain stage. He stays in his 17, 18-year-old mind, you know, even as an adult. So you see so many guys in their mid to late 20s 
who are moving like 18 year olds meaning if they probably no offense to anyone who's watching this but let's say they stay gubo still they still stay at home um but if you go into his room his room is clean his bed is made you know he all his all star shoes and whatever are washed are clean i'm a shirt are hanging he's doing all the things that a great 18 year old would do but in terms of the manhood of his age because he's dirty you know he's weak he's he's not appealing he's 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 not seen as a man because he hasn't developed past those stages lo mama who thought she was doing an amazing job failed to get to a point where she developed and allowed her child to actually flourish and that's what we are doing eric we, thomas speaks about that his mom throwing him out of the house and making him homeless which is an extreme right yeah it is an extreme where, where, whereas you wanted to guide them throughout all the steps mm. and say look at this stage from age cuz once a lot of these boys don't realize what happens after matric yeah none of them actually know you know if you are blessed and lucky enough to go to a university which is another uh, enclosed, sh- enclosed sheltered space is sh- a sheltered space then great and then maybe get in an internship program whatever but let's say you out there let's say you 22 they don't understand with when you 22 and you are earning 8000 rand you it's not about you trying to figure out life you no know, 8000 you are actually in the wild competing with men 15 years your senior earning 10 times what you're earning who will chow your girl given half a chance like it's literally a doggy dog world out there but as parents we haven't prepared our kids we think but we we're not saying hey the girls are still going to play with you amachi they're still going to backstab you at spanning they're still going to have racial undertones you're still going to face this and this and this and your child crashes and burns and become depressed and have an anxiety disorder they have all these things because they weren't ready and they weren't guided throughout all those steps and we are doing that at a young age with our little boys is it a dog eats dog or yeah. do- doggy dog is it a what which world is it snoop dog is it a doggy dog or dog eats dog snoop doggy i don't know doggy dog doggy doggy dog doggy dog doggy dog 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 so you've got three boys uh, yeah. Uzita, Untanzi, Undima. yeah before you had kids um what was your hope for them at least from um toddler primary school perspective in terms of raising them did you have a vision yeah man did you have some type of an idea of how you I, wanted I, to raise I, them i i i did uh, i i did i really thought to go to i would be more hands on um i thought to go to i would push more masculine things on top of them you know like whether it's the playing the rugby the working in the garden i thought to go to they'd become those you know little soldiers of of kids not actually fully understanding go to um they will have two parents you know uh, of which the female energy will have 90% say you know and your 10% is just mere suggestions you know so i didn't know that because you know we grew up seeing umamsi having all the say sure. so if that's where your 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 base and your foundation about parenting is is a parent who has all the say then now when you're a parent you'll also have all the say you know so you, you assumed <clears throat> that the parenting template to be used was going to be yours only That I, was the I, assumption I, before. I I assumed that even if there was another one, sure. it would be more of a discussion. I didn't know how much heavily skewed it would be in one side. I don't know if that makes sense. I hear you. <clears throat> so from everything from what they wore to what they ate to what they, you know, for me it was suggestions, you know. How old is Uzita now? Uzita is in grade 3, when I got na 8. 8 years old. Yeah. Um How would eight, you six, how, how would you have done things different in the past eight years if you're saying you so thought so one? so for me it would be putting him into more challenging situations like you what? know so Uzita doesn't experience a lot of fear anxiety nervousness in the spaces that I want him to he rather runs away from things that make him scared okay. you understand so let's say for example something that um, jumping off a diving board into a pool mm. Uzita would rather not do that you know and If I am there, so it's a, you'll jump. That one come so come up. Where do I call my call so come? Because again, so th- this is a time thing. It's not that you changed any of your parenting. You're just saying if no, I so, spend more time with him so, by myself. So so if I spent more time with him by myself, yeah. I would have introduced way more um tougher situations. I'm not mm. saying I wouldn't have still gotten him the coco pops and the Nutella. I'm just saying what in terms of so many things where I say ya bona lo kudla so kudla. Tanda utande. Because there's been many situations where I've seen the food being dished and I'll be like no uzoqeda and then figure munyeti no usudlile it's okay my boy 
Omunye being the mom. Sure. You've had enough to eat, you know. And now I'm not going to go play a tennis match with my way in Ghana in front of the boy. And you just go, hey, okay, take it off. It's also not a thin boy, so maybe it had enough to eat. Yeah, no, it was also not a thin boy at all. But I'm just giving like those type of examples. Guti, I would have put him into more uh, challenging situations. Sure. Uh, whether it is something as playing with the next door neighbor's dog, you know, where he might be like, I'm scared. No, that and then just corner say cut. I want him to put himself in spaces where there's pressure, controlled spaces mm. where there's pressure, where he is nervous, where he is scared, where he does panic, so that he can manage himself. I want him to take more risks because. Once he's out in the big bad world, he'll need to be able to face his own anxieties and fears and whatever that he'll be faced. And that to me will be brave and strong if he can face that. Um, <clears throat> you make a lot of content with the boys. Yeah. You've created a TikTok account for the boys. Yeah, but um, we've kind of put that on pause. Sure. You've yeah. um, you've taken them to the gym. I've seen mm. you exercising with them. You go with them to rugby and yeah. other outings. You've taken them to a shooting range yeah. recently and they actually shot guns. Yeah. Short, uh, nice uh, little point to do. Uh, we've traveled with them, yeah, even around the country to f- family spaces, etc. Out of ten, which would be your ideal? Mm. How much would you score yourself in terms of what you wish in the last eight years? Just what does it? With me, um, in terms of the flashy Instagram stuff, I'd score myself like a nine. But in terms of the intrinsic things that I'm talking about, just overall. I'd score Specifically what uh, you were saying five, about creating like a five. stronger child. I'd give myself a five. Okay. Um, when my ma- and we're having these serious discussions, mm. I'd give myself a five. Maybe So you've was, achieved 50% of what yeah. you ideally wished yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Which is almost a fair compromise if yeah. you're saying there's a woman. So you've yeah. done your best with your 50%. With, with my, you know, 50% the parenting. Le. If you're saying you've achieved 50% of what you wished for, even with the 10% time you had, yeah. that means you... You've almost gotten a hundred percent for your fifty percent. Because if yeah, if you had so. more time with them, then it, it again for me going back to definitions. Uh-huh. What is a weak child versus what is a strong child? Uh-huh. For me, is a child who is resilient. You know, so I'm asking myself from a parenting point: Have I done enough? Have I put him in enough tests to test that resiliency, yeah. or if that's what it's called, and to actually have him win? In those mm. spaces, have I put him in enough spaces that have made him anxious? Because even taking him to a gun range or whatever, for some of these kids at a certain age, it's like um, it's like the PlayStation. Mm. Yeah, but it's like taking him to the zoo. There's a difference between going to the zoo and going, oh, there's a lion, versus if I know that he's scared of a snake, and then I get a corn snake, I say bambala. Yeah, I born a good man. Just a different fear. You know, the lion. Yeah, but he saw a lion. He wasn't scared. Yeah, but the lion was 200 meters away. The corn snake. He had to hold it. You know, it's one thing to say he shot a little point two two, and you can't even feel it when you're shooting. Versus something where I say, "Nas is feeling shalianyon." You know, those are the things that I actually want my child to go through, where he's fully aware, emotionally immersed in that space. Versus what he, he's at a rugby game. But he's not really at a rugby game because he's having chip and dip, you know. The rugby's in the background somewhere and he's having chip and dip. He's watching something on the phone. So, Gim, I'm, I'm very cognizant of Guti. Where is it that it's more like flashy Instagram stuff versus the reality of getting your hands dirty? You, you don't think you're being unreasonable <coughs> in, your, in your desires? I mean, you've bought your kids a snake. You've bought them rabbits. They've had dogs. And I mentioned some of the other things you've done. That's why I'm them. scoring myself a five, though. You don't think you're being unrealistic in your desires, like let's say wanting a ten. Would you like maybe that's a bit too much? No, well the the the, the ten is the north star, right? Mm. So we we need to be mm, one, uh, striving for it. I'm not saying Guti will ever get there, mm. but as long as I know Guti, because I see my boys and I go, hey, I wanna la, manga kunisela, kunisela, kunisela. Sure. You know, it's the same like us in Jobas Chai podcast, Guti. We will look at Subalum Chita that you are raving about, Chris. Chris Williamson. You know, that's yeah. the north star. Which you will ah, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Chris Williamson from an aesthetics okay. perspective. So let's take the aesthetics of Chris Williamson plus the conversational the, quality yeah, of, of Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan. That's the North Star. Yeah. And that's great. So where are you if they are... Please carry on, sorry. Please carry on. Uh-huh. Please carry on, sir. I'm in the studio, man. I'm in the studio. Is that Usher? <laughs> Confessions. <laughs> Is that Usher and Confessions? <laughs> Usher's busy taking it out on people's wives, man. Huh? 
Who are you busy crying and na 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 band pa band? Getting right back to the topic yeah. and uh, out of what I'm not puzzled, Ash. Routine, routine, I got done. Man, ding. What the deal, I'm a cheat. What's the TD Jakes? Have you ever been solo? Tini Tini Jakes. Tini Tini Jakes. Everything it takes. As the second time I just look at them, I say motivate. As sometimes they say, "Gang, you are in, you are in your greatest era." Yeah, what am I for? They say, "Let's see the checks." Man, Jay. What you have been swallowed by? What? Where have you ever been swallowed? Have you been swallowed? That's where. Where Nasas got to us swallow the show, but this episode will not be uploaded. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're doing this Allegedly. just for fun. Allegedly. Allegedly. What's it? So for the average, um, I'd like you to score out of ten the average black South African father. I'd like you to score on average the ev- the the white South African father. Yeah. And I'd like you to compare it to yourself. I think from the, from the average. From my experiences, the black South African father from my experiences is sitting at a a 1. One, um, one out of 10. 1 2 on average. Sure. Uh the white fathers are sitting at a 6 7. You th- you think the the way you're parenting as a father is below the average white father? Yeah. Be honest. Yes, and the reason is is that when are they not trying to? Um, 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 Umlung has a privilege in the sense to go to. I sat in the workspace. Ne, Tina. As black people in the workspace, we have to put on our white masks when we get into the office. Mm. Yeah, one. We have to the way we dress. That one because how we live our life on the, the weekend is not how we live our lives Monday at the office. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, Masses figures panini. Hey, did you listen to Wackhead Simpson? You know, yeah, I was having a water. Yeah, one, you you have to become something else. Where's Mlungu? He was actually listening to Ikekne, watching Ikekne, or listening to that's who he is. You know, this is how he dresses when a your the way that you dress on that uh, work informal event is not how you dress at some jol on a Saturday. Umlungu, how he dressed at the jol on Saturday is how he dressed at that work informal event. Yeah, fun again. Okay. So the reason why I'm saying that is because Umlungu, their parenting template is based on them. T, now our parenting template, including myself, has been edited by them. Okay. You know, so it's not essentially what the essence of a black father should be looking for. It is a bit of blackness, but understand this but at the same time, articulate this ngisi, know it, but at the same time, know what lobsters are. They need to know what canoeing is and know. I don't think that's fair. Let, 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 me, let me say where I'm going. Sure. Because Bona, they've got a real plan that hasn't been tainted. So for them, it's easy for them to hit it, to, to, to hit home. They have a proper backing because they saw what fathering was from their fathers mm. and their fathers saw it from their fathers. And when they come there with a wealth of knowledge. So for them, it's easy. You know, when we went camping with oh, 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 Zita, no and Tanzi, you know, for me as Baba, putting the tent on my own as Upensin, it was already, yeah, one. for them, they've done it a hundred times before. They did it with the grandfather. They did it with their uncles. So, Loba, but this white about father, the average white person. I'm talking about the ones that I'm exposed to. Oof, that that's no. Can that's you, a no uh, for me. No, can you say, Loba? We spoke about the average black father in South Africa. That, and I said, and that then I I'm asked about the to. average white. Yes, I'm, and I added by saying that I'm exposed to because I'm not exposed to fathers from the squatter camps. <clears throat> I'm not. The fathers that I'm exposed to are fathers that are trying the best that they can. So the fathers you're exposed to, this is why I was saying this is unfair. Your kids yeah. go to a very expensive, very privileged private school. Good for them. One of the most expensive and most prestigious schools in the country, it's by far. Bonge. Bonge. You live in the northern suburbs of Johannesburg. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to think you and their mom are very privileged people from an income, class, lifestyle perspective. Mm-hmm. Your kids have been on planes. Mm-hmm. Uh, your kids have gotten a top quality of life. Mm-hmm. Uh, even the idea of going rowing with them, going to a shooting range... Creating Instagram posts. I, I, for the average white parent, that no way close. But, but again, Lunga Lung, I'm saying, which I'm only basing it on, on, on black, what I've been black fathers on. at St. John's and so, white fathers at St. John's. Let, let's go, let, let, let's use that. But is that really what you're doing? No, 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 I'm not saying it's St. John's. Okay. I wasn't saying it. I was actually thinking about 
Tony from when I was in school or Anton Prinsloo. But they were know. they were elite white people. No, but I, that's who I was exposed to. Okay. You know, I was like, I'm thinking of Lee, not, not, Lee, Car- not Lee, Carl and Lee Lee Conway's father. You can't mention people's names. You know, he was involved. He was there. He was like, so Uli got to see a father being a father. Who Calvin Neft got to see a father being a father. Karo Boshov sees his father. Morris Berg, Tony, Anton, those guys got to see. And if you look at Anton, sure. who Anton, when he spoke to his father, I only heard him speak of Afrikaans to his father. He didn't have to change into some template. His father used to sit on the passenger seat. Anton used to drive that bucky. Mm. And he used to go, Papa, and he used to kiss Papa straight on the lips. This is a, up until my trick. Papa goes, thingy, he grabs his stuff from the back of the bucky, eh, back. I go, jeez. That's amazing. I used to watch Kelvin, like when he struggles with his IT, what, what. He go, Dad, the body would come through, help him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, write it down. Here's the shortcut to it. I'm like, geez, okay. Mm. So the ones that I was exposed to from the schooling that we went to up until the university that I was uh, privileged to go to, to now, if you want to just limit it to a St. Stadion's, I mean, a, a St. John's. Yes, I'm talking from my own, vin- uh, is it V? 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 This is a vantage point. Vantage point. Which Even school as a did you teacher, go to? Hey, Even as a teacher, I'd watch how black fathers parent their kids versus how white fathers are parenting their kids. And you still think you're substandard and to I'd white, watch, white fathers? I'd watch black fathers try to become, copy, because you, 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 you can copy good, but you'll never be as good as that original. They would try and be Mark the white father, mm. to Uchunya. And it's all these rich black guys, all their kids are called Uchunya. Hectic. Very Uchunya bonk. Yeah, bon. So, I'm going to go Uchunya. I can't even check Uchunya by six. Uchunya. Anyway, so... That's a rich black person thing. Yeah, it's a rich... Uchunya. Yeah, hey, hey. So, I was with Uchunya. We went and we... Um, we What's were going on at, at the SND? Um, hey, bonk, bonk. I'm going to go to Uchunya. I'm going to go And then... Super Anyway... anyway so you'd watch this black father try and copy what Mark, the white guy, is doing mm. and then try and sow that into his child. But it doesn't... So when I'm coming to rate how he is as a father, sure. to do something with that thing, it doesn't make sense. Mm. Mark goes surfing. He's always surfed. Therefore, as a father, his child is also surfing. Surfing for them is nothing. So when they go buy a holiday home, they go buy it by the coast where they know what the waves are doing this. That's where they grew up. When Mark was a child, that's where they used to go on holiday. So he understands that template. Now, Uspicho, who now has Mali, because we engineer, now he's going to take a holiday home because we want to Mark. Hey, we must go for surfing lessons. What's he going to say for him? How was he going to say for him? So now if this guy, in his idea of surfing, I give him, let's say, a seven. Because as a result, the child doesn't get to do their geography. The child sleeps late, wakes up tired from, and I give him a seven. Where nang zog niguba? Where nang zog niguba? So I realize our our perspectives on fatherhood are quite different. And very, and we've we've done this exercise with our own father as well, and it blows my mind how you view things and how I disagree. It's it's important. Yeah. But it blows my mind, and it. It makes me wonder, obviously, from our mom's perspective, our father's perspective, and, and my sister. Um, may I speak about my kids, a few of them? <laughs> of course you can. Oh, of course you can. Of course. So I've got seven children now mm-hmm. from five moms. Damn. Um, mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. one, two, three, the, the three youngest are probably not worth a conversation because they're too young. My mm-hmm. third youngest just started grade R. Mm-hmm. Grade R or grade RR this year. Mm-hmm. Ukauchi. Mm. Um, Uskupu is at crash and mm. uh, Umoya Uzuri is like a dot. Yeah, no, baby. baby. Then Uzulu has to be excluded, unfortunately, because mm. I've kind of been kept from him yeah, for a while. Yeah, but I, I got painful. to spend some time with him at some point. Mm. So it's mostly Unkunzi, Africa, Ushaga. Yeah, who are my reference points? Yeah, in Ushaga, it's quite limited. So it's mostly Africa and, and Unkunz. Mm. I wanted to raise soldiers. Yes. Um, I look at Jason Bourne as a template, fictional mm-hmm. character. I look at Catalea from Colombiana. As mm-hmm. a, I don't know who that is. So it's a movie with Zoe Saldan, San, Saldan, Saldana, Saldana. Um, she's a super actress, but you don't watch movies. Mm-hmm. So 
She's in Avatar. She's in Guess Who. Uh, she's in Drumline. She's Nick Cannon's girlfriend in Drumline. No, she's in Drumline. In in real life, on Guess Who. In real life. Oh, I'm not sure. Of who Guess Who? Life. Uh, no, Ashton, Ashton Kutcher, Ashton Kutcher. Ch- 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 with Bernie Mac. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but her character in Colombiana is Catalea. Her parents get okay. killed, and she goes to spend time. She goes to live with her uncle, who's like in Kabi, basically. Yeah. And she learns how to be a super Kabi. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to raise soldiers. Yeah. Number one. Number two, my whole objective with my raising my children has been number one to be a guide and a supervisor mm. who is going to help my children become independent mm. as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. And by as soon as possible, if age five, so be it. Mm-hmm. So the easiest one is the financial. Mm. How can I help you make money for yourself mm. as quickly as possible? Whether yeah. you're a child actor, whether you're rapping like Lil Wayne at age 10 or you're Justin Bieber, um, you've got Will and Jada's kids as well, Willow and Jaden. Um, whether you're running a little, like the Jewish kids or the Muslim kids, mm. a little business, whatever, but you're making your own money, 5,000, 10,000 rand a month. Sure. Then there's the other parts of independence. The, I don't know if you call it psychological independence, but the ability mm-hmm. to solve problems. Mm-hmm. To know that I don't know what the answer is. Let me Google. Let me check an encyclopedia. Let me, out, yeah. let me go and ask someone in the know. I don't know where to get this thing. Let me go and ask. Let me go and mm-hmm. find out. I don't know what this is. Let me try. Like, how how do I solve problems? Mm. Of which money is just a tool to solve yeah. problems. But how do I solve problems? Then there's more difficult ones like emotional independence and not really independence, but strength and mm. spiritual. Mm. So the emotional is, <laughs> that one normally only comes through experience and yeah. being, being moored burnt. Yeah. properly. And then the spiritual one is tough for a young child because again, they also don't have life experience. Mm. Do you really know what spirituality is and suffering and Unless you're an old soul and I'm not lousy, I'm in you, really? and you know. Mm. But the financial one was the easiest one. And the question was, how do you get this done in the best way possible and with the best platforms? Mm. So we are limited mm-hmm. in a capitalist world because mm-hmm. um, most of us have to work mm-hmm. if you're not lucky enough to run a business, which means you have to hand your children over to other people to mm. raise, which is normally a school format. Mm. So it's about finding the right school. And for me, South Africa doesn't have the right schools. But you look for the best one mm. within the mess. And you and I had a had an amazing schooling career. Yeah. Um, academically, we were strong. Sports-wise, we were strong. Culture, we were strong. The kids mm. kind of liked us. Um, we had a really good time, man. School mm. was great. Mm. So mm. we didn't hate school. We weren't mm. those kids that were failing and going to detention and what, what. Mm. We had a good time. And... It would be nice for me to put my kids through the same experience. Mm. But I also realized how that experience left me naive, vulnerable, and unknowing of how to stand on my own two feet. Mm. The assumption was grade 12 plus a degree equals guaranteed you, job. Yeah, so great. And that formula doesn't hold yeah. anymore, number one. Number two, even if you get that formula right, there are so many more dynamics to life. Mm. You know, your child could become a sports star. Your mm. child could become a businessman. A politician, your child could be anything sensational. Mm. You don't have to limit them to the schooling thing because your child could be LeBron. We don't mm. know how LeBron did at school. Your mm. child could be Beyonce Knowles. We mm. don't know how Beyonce Knowles did at school. Mm. <laughs> your child could be Sia Colise. We don't know how Sia Colise did at school. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. That, that was my wish. Mm. And you look at the dynamics. Mm. Kunzi being my firstborn, I mean, Joburg, I thought Kips was a dope school. Mm. But it was because of the hype of Kez, yeah. King Edward School, great yes. rugby school, great facilities, uh, great boys that, that come mm. from there. Because in my head, I've never really liked private schools. Mm. And maybe I'll, I'll give you a chance soon now to speak about mm. your thoughts on private versus public. There's the, there's the element of the other parent being the mom. Mm. I have been both blessed and unlucky in having mothers of my kids who are for the most part, good women who want great things for our kids Mm. and who I'd like to think are trying their best. Mm. What their best is kind of clashes with mine because they want that perfect school experience. Mm. My kids must be a straight A student, top Mm. athlete, have a good time, go the camping and the what what. They don't see the world the way I see it of the children must grind. Mm. Um, and the grinding is now outside of schooling, mm. where if you want your child to be LeBron, 
playing playing basketball just at school with the league is not enough. Mm. It'll never be enough. You need to go to a Lokshini and to play with the rough, gassy kids. You need to play with older boys who are going to push you around, shove you around, throw you on the court so that by the time you're 13 years old, you can take on 18, 19 year olds mm. because you're strong enough, you're smart enough, you're skilled enough. And that's just in sports. Yeah. Then there's business. You must sit with hustlers, entrepreneurs from a young age and hustle and make more money than them. Then there's the social skills where a child, you put them in a room and this child is literally charming everyone more than this 50-year-old who's got life experience. Mm. And that can only come with outside school experience and exposure. That's guided. Which now becomes limited because the moms believe in school so much, number one. Mm. Number two, the mothers are anti-alternative projects. Mm -hmm. And number three, with me, which is the saddest thing compared to you, having my kids away from me. Mm. Kunze and Africa were with me for eight years. There was a journey, and I think in that time, I probably would score myself a six out of ten mm. um, of what I wanted. There was mm. a lot where I was lacking, but there was a lot where I think we were doing well. They'd go to the farms. They learned to be comfortable speaking to adults. You know, They were learning basic problem solving. They were becoming part of the family, and mm. their voices carried a little bit of weight. That's true, yeah. And then they were taken away. No, uh, not taken away. Then their mom moved with them to China for four mm. years. Then they did the schooling thing, which is great. And the mom is doing brilliant. Not mm. only are they at a good school, mm. it's a good international school in China. For four years and now for the past year, moving forward, they had an international top school in Brazil. They're doing the school thing great. But when I look at them, all the other things I wanted to develop are not there to a point where Unkunz is turning 14 this year, Africa is turning 11. And where we were moving on a journey of independence they've almost regressed. Unkunzi, for me, at this age, at 14, should be able to catch taxis by himself. He should be making his own money, even if it's just from hustling me, you, and mm. other people around us. who like, say, Uncle Toby, can I please wash your car, bro? Because I'm like, did you make money? Uncle Toby's car's dirty. Go fucking get that done, bro. Mm. Did you catch a taxi? Uh, Baba, I can't see you this weekend. I've got soccer. Uh, so, it, so I'm out. I'm catching taxis. Or I'm playing rugby with this law school somewhere, or this worst school. Now, the old, the old gents came to fetch me. You're friends with niggas in cars, yeah. Yeah, because we, they want to show me something, whatever. And I'm, I've introduced them to my friends and they're in businesses and they're hustling, etc. Mm. I think it would have been much further because I wanted to stop. I wanted Kunzi to stop financially needing me mm. and his mom by age 16, mm. which is in two years' time. And the work that would have been put in in the past couple of years is nowhere. And the schooling system doesn't do that. Similar to Africa, who has a dream of being a musician. That's mm. easy. Get her to even join a church. Join a church choir. She performs in front of us. When you make videos, she sings. You introduce her to like celebrities here in Joburg. You're like, my daughter wants to sing. Mm. Can she feature on your track? Whatever. Ushaga, obviously, less so because he's in Pinetown, Durban, mm. with his mom. He's doing the school thing. And look, the lights, he started grade one this year. Mm. So he should have probably also been added to the bottom. Mm. but Uzulu I can't speak much for because he's just been with his mom mostly I wanted my kids to be independent and where you and I are spoiled is our kids have really great lives they go to great schools they have an abundance of great food their mothers love them their mothers are health conscious they want mm. their kids to eat well their mothers are thoughtful they are in great spaces they are loved both sides of the family. Um, but what's lacking is this grit, this hardness that when you live a privileged life, you can only get from it being forced and being created. Because outside of that, you're never going to have it. You're never going to have it. You're getting driven everywhere. You don't know how to hustle like a loaf of bread with a machita. You don't even have experience and exposure to, let's say they are cousins in Tetir in the farm. Mm. They don't have experience and exposure to Inganes as a Lokshin. Not not top kids that study with them that happen to live in the township. Like yeah. Kabelo Mabalana, no. Mm. Like township kids. What we had exposure to so that yeah. you can have that perspective of bro. Which I tried with Unkuns in Africa to be like, do you know kids don't have parents? Kids don't have fathers. Do you understand that what you're eating is a privilege? Do you know that other people have this? And you take them to those spaces to be like, I want you to see this life. And then I want you to be independent. 
and I need you to hustle. I try now virtual, but mm. it doesn't fucking work. And again, you're only having that little bit of exposure and then the rest is school and mom, which is brilliant. And their moms are scoring 100% on mm. that template. But I worry that turn 18, 19, 20, if ever they get a little bit of struggle in their lives, they're going to crash. Mm. Whereas you and I would never crash because we didn't get, we had, we had privilege because of your mom, but we knew some level I, of struggle. I, I, I don't know if it, because I think sometimes we romanticize certain things that happen at school. Um, and we don't really talk about the lessons that we learned through the failures, through, I won't say we were poor, but we couldn't afford things that, as we said, some of our peers would, you know. So there was a lot of pain. Um, we never got to... Yeah, without going too deep into in, into the family dynamics. But a lot of things that you're explaining, give me, come across as masculine traits, you know. So from things like you want them to to produce, you know, whether it's making their own money, whatever the case is, you're talking about problem solving, you're talking about independence, you're talking about finances. All of those are masculine traits and you are wanting to for their feminine moms to be able to teach that to them. And I don't think that'll be possible. I want um, no. So you are seeking no. Okay. I didn't expect anything from their mom. Sorry. You you were saying with you, there might be a clash in your parenting philosophies. It's, it's them not allowing you know. me to parent how I want. Yes, the, and not, and, not and, me expecting. And, and the reason why for I I, I think Wuti, from my experience um, in in with with a lot of women, uh, they need some sort of guidance from an energy system that they don't have. They don't need guidance from a feminine energy because they know that, but they need guidance. You know, and in order to get guys, they need to buy into your plan. And you don't buy from someone you don't like, you know. So if there is a clash between the mom and the dad, you know, I don't like that guy. I'm not going to buy into whatever his plan is, you know. I'm going to focus on the energy that I know, which as we have seen with our kids, our kids are loving. They're kind. They're respectful, you know. They have all those feminine traits. Our kids love food and cooking and, you know, uh, watch Uzita. He likes wants to chop. He wants to do all these feminine things because that's the channel that he's been. And it's unfair for me to come in and try and move it away because I know Guti, I can't expect Umawake if they don't buy into me as Umuntu. They definitely won't buy into my plan to kind of let my plan also flow in here. So it's like, no, they, they they won't push for that. So I think that they causes that dissonance or causes that friction. You know, and I think the best way, if we are trying to get our plans, even though we might not be with our kids all the time, to be pushed is to win mom over into our plan the same way that the school has won them over into that plan. You must understand, um, that school model works perfectly for them. Mm. Because if a sister, just your average sister, has a matric, has a degree, there's some guy that's going to scoop her up. She's more than, she's now the top 1%. For a guy who's got a matric and a degree, that may not mean nothing. You know, it's almost like two people that work at McDonald's. A pretty sister who works at McDonald's, who's kind, loving, respectful. And a guy who works at McDonald's, who um, chito grand. A guy who earns half a million can come and scoop up the sister. The opposite is not the same for guys. You know, sorry. The opposite is not the same Maybe for I'm guys. Hungry. So the guy who is kind, respectful, well-mannered and works at McDonald's, the, the the sisters that he's exposed to that he can partner with are very few. Whereas for the lady that does that, it's different. So for her, when she's raising kids, because of her lived experience, you can work at McDonald's and be kind and respectful and you can have everything in the world. This guy doesn't see it the same. The only way that this McDonald's lady can feel this guy as if she likes him and buys into his plan. Mm. If that's not the case, I, I, I don't see it happening at all. I want to speak about public versus private school. Um, yeah. I'd like to think the mothers of my kids believe that I'm super dope. Okay. Whether they'll admit it or not. Um, how they rationalize it in my assumption Mm -hmm. I assume in my head. How they rationalize it is I'm dope because of school. And in my dopeness, uh, 
they worry about me trying to experiment with the kids with the model that didn't create me mm -hmm. um of which i don't have proof of concept because these are my kids they are meant to be my mm. proof of concept but a person won't let you experiment uh, because they're like but you're like this because you have a qualification and you went to school and it's like it's exactly because i went to school and have a qualification that i'm saying that i i don't think this is the only or the best way I, I, and I, and my I, my biggest issue as i said at the beginning was even if they bought into my plan mm -hmm. um they can't implement it mm -hmm. for various yeah understandable of course. reasons of course. and i don't have as much access as i'd like to my kids to do it myself i agree they do think you dope in the sense that none of the relationship would have happened if they didn't think you were dope mm. you know um i disagree with it's because of your schooling meaning ukuthi you've spent enough time with labosi so labo to know ukuthi what the type of school that you went to and the people that have been produced from that school if you had gone to let's say a school like a hilton for example they'd be like well maybe most guys that go to that type of school they know the most of the guys that go to the school that you went to you know don't become ulungel or peno you know or even most of the guys that they've experienced to, from your town so i think it's they understand that it's you and they like you and that's why the relationship formed in the kids no i'm i'm saying they i'd like to think yes i may be special yeah but they believe if i'm smart capable can pro can make money they they believe it's because of the journey it, i took yes but i'm saying with if you were still working in banking mm. and was making a living off banking you know and that's because you went to school and you went to 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 rose and you got a finance degree then then i would agree with that but you're not making a living off banking you know it is not the networks that you picked up at roads that opened up what you working with or or devs are no 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 slim no see it's oh, not I don't think networks. I don't think they think I'm dope because of that by the way no but I'm I'm hearing you I'm just saying Wuti I agree I, with the I, initial I think I was just they disagreeing think I'm with dope that. up to that point of banking and they think everything else in my life is is debatable okay yeah I don't think with, they think I'm dope because of that with 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 that being said I I one of their arguments is always you have a qualification if ever things don't work out you can always go back and work because which, they believe the which, way I'm living which, my life which, is the throw of a dice which, which is very true though according to them and people that go with that line according to most people according to most people yeah. so again it's not about them pushing your plan it's about them taking a step back so that your plan can actually mm. uh the roots of your plan can actually go down mm. and i'm saying with you until such time where they have a buy into that plan before they even buy into that plan they need to first buy into you again why must they buy into me have you ever bought from someone you know like why mu why it's a hum it's a human nature no, if, no. if if i believe that you are anti pension you are racist you are sexist you are anti me in every way i won't give you a chance to pitch your idea to me you could have the best idea your idea could literally cure cancer but until such time where i have some sort of rapport and there's a sort of respect you know because i thought i knew you we grew up together and then next thing you backstab me you mm. did something that is unspeakable now kujuru kujuru next week you want to come and tell me hey in face you know i've got a plan hey bro you and your plan you can take your plan you go play in traffic why must they bind to my plan this is these are my because children because they believe that their plan is superior to yours sure but these are my children that's that's okay so no. we're fighting no it's 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 a human nature that's why i said with no, the longest time I'm, for I'm, me I'm i used to so, think so i i, I used to think that parenting was 50-50 sure i used to think it was 50-50 <laughs> no the only we'll reason i'm asking these saying. questions is because i've i've tried the whole buying thing yeah. and you realize you're working with a, a conditioning bias of course and i could spend the the next 10 years trying to win them over yes versus spending the next 10 years working on my kids yes. and part of the issue is for how long must i keep trying to pitch this to them while my kids are growing up and they believe in this template well that's because that's, the, that's that's the journey of life though so will you get to the top of the mountain pushing the car uphill of course you can you know but it will take you longer because right now you're working against their systems so for example if africa wants to be a musician and you wanted to go out there you're going to be working against a force at home that says hamba fundi geography enze lokho enen 
or we're not going to on Saturday, there's extra mass, there's what's what I mean, my boys do violin, so even on a Sunday, if you want to go to the farm, whatever, they can't because they've got violin at 9 a.m. And uh, So now I'm working against the system that she thinks is superior mm. than the system that I have. So Why? what's the solution? Because I haven't won in terms of that farm, because I might have won her over in other things that I mm. do. But in terms of the farm, when she weighs it up, I haven't done enough to sell the farm being a superior plan. How do you sell versus it? Versus that. I need to see, is it, is it, what are the fruits of them playing violin every Sunday? What does that look like? Are the models that I can point to and say, this person has played violin for the past 10 years every Sunday, look at that. Versus this person has gone to the farm every Sunday and done this. And how, that's how, how do you sell like. that to a woman, to a mother? How do you sell it to a person? Mm, that's what I'm asking. The, I forget the mother part. Mm. I'm just saying to a person. If I to, if I to sell this to you, and I say, hey, the, ch- the child has a chance of going to rugby practice every Saturday for this two hours versus them going and uh, picking up, which one would you prefer? Lapomina, I like them picking up or or going to the library. You might feel and see the benefits here. So I'll need to think out of my head to find actually ways to win you over, to find and say, look, I know you like, I don't know, I'm a green pepper. If I take them to the farm, we'll start growing green peppers and hopefully as a right and then we can give it to you. So it's you know. talking. Well, I, I don't know how people sell. Now I'm know. asking you. So you're, you're, so the, you're the one that's pitching the idea of you need to win the buy of the mom. Yes. And I'm so asking, you're speaking to me, by the way, yes, so about for, my for, kids. Yes, yes. So, and so, their mothers so, that so, you know. So, so I'm asking you, how, how would how you do, do it? How do I win them over? I, I, would, I would work harder on the personal relationship between you and the mothers. How? Talking to them. No, I'm, I'm, but I'm um, asking uh, you. Uh, you know the mothers of um, the kids. So be, being nice to them. I, I would. Uh, that would be a good start. Okay. You know? So whatever tactics you made them like you initially, you know, I would go back to those tactics. Which that's how you win them over. And once they like you, you know, much like sales, I'm in sales. Mm. Once a person likes me, it makes selling whatever I have a lot easier. But okay. as long as long as that person doesn't feel me, ne WhatsApp ya mingsho, WhatsApp ang WhatsApp ni abon tni yam por. Lapo zoto la lumon kute. Don't forget to pack the gum boots because we're going to the farm on Saturday. Lapo my pegi WhatsApp ya kasuga. I think it's very complicated with me, and it's not a conversation for here. Yeah, it's very complicated. Pu- public public versus private schools. Uh, which is better and why? Uh, Unkunzi in Africa went to Emerentia Primary yeah. at some point. Uh, Ushaga at a primary school in. Pine Town, I won't mention the name because he's there now. At least Tunkuns in Africa have left Emerentia Primary. Mm-hmm. Uzulu is at a primary school in Newcastle, mm-hmm. which I won't mention as well because he's still there now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always preferred public co-ed, mixed, mixed gender schools. Yep. Uh, your three boys are currently at a private single-sex boys' mm-hmm. school. Mm-hmm. Uh, which school do you think is, is better and why? For, for so, your kids, not for the world. Private single sex schools. Um, so this is how I see it. I'm saying, Guti, in life, all we have is risk management. You know, so what do we deem? What does society, forget me and you for now, for just a second. What does society deem as success? Success is getting as many A's in matric. Success is playing top level sports, having a well-balanced child, you know, who can get into any university and get a good job. That is what society deems as school success, Right. And now I'm looking at the probability factor. If I send my child to three different schools, a super cell, one school, or a Thalanati, sending him to a Newcastle High, and then sending him to a St. John's. Those are the three options I have. Looking at the measure of success being as many A's as possible, playing top-level sports, holistic child. I know go to Thalanati, they may have a metric pass rate of 30%. With a exemption rate of of that 30 percent let's say 10 percent of that 30 percent may have the ability to go to university you know if i'm giving birth to just an average child my child is just average in every way i take my child and put them there i know that they won't make them to university just by them being purely average you know i know that my child will not play a team sports of any sort just by putting them through there because they don't have the resources to make him a good tennis player, good swimmer, good cricket player in that space. Let's take him to Newcastle High. Absolute average child. If he's an absolute average child, 
I know at Newcastle High he'll pass metric, you know. However, the absolute average child at Newcastle High doesn't make it into university. The absolute average child doesn't play a team sport. The absolute child there doesn't make it into uh, the violin of the world or become holistic in that space. The average child at Newcastle High does not go to Witz, Stellenbosch, Rhodes, UCT. That's not the average child. Now let's go to St. John's. I know that my average child will get a matric. Uh, did you did you just say St. John's? I'm talking about private schools. Yes, I'm going from government. I use two government examples. Which I'm are which are schools. average? Yes. St. So, John's is not so, an average private school. Okay, let's go to De La Salle Holy Cross College, right? So I taught. Maybe there. try and use St. Dominic's Academy. Or, Cu- I, or Curo. Which I want to use schools that I know a little bit about. St. So John, you can't use St. John's and Newcastle High. I took, then I, I took you're away. You're rather I, I took away. I took away St. John's, and I'm putting at De La Salle Holy Cross College. Yeah, but that's also not a. It's not a standard private school. But I'm trying that, to use. That's why I said maybe Curo. But I don't know enough about Curo. So I can, if you the, want my the, opinion, the reason, I want to give it the reason, the, based the reason on I my have own to stop you experiences. Is because you and I are having a, a personal chat here. Yeah. Uh, to to jump from Metlalanati to Newcastle High to St. John's or, or De La Salle yeah. is very unfair because if you're going to use De La Salle or, or St. John's, hmm. you then probably have to reference like a, a, a Kez, a, a Grey High, a hmm. Westville Boys, Girls, hmm, hmm. I, at I, that I, level I, of, I could of use, elite. I, I could use a Bryanston High because I know a lot about a Bryanston High. I don't know enough about it, and that's okay. a co I'm, I'm just worried about because because the question is which schools do you think are better? And I, I hear the arguments yes, on risk yes. management. I, I'll, 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 I'm just I'll, I'm just scared of I'll, where, I'll where, try, where you're going. I'll try and speak to a kids as an elite uh, government single sex school and compare it to a school a hundred meters away at St John's. Okay. Ne? <clears throat> So we're talking about which means both maybe then we six. also need to bring in an elite township school that has of 100% which I don't know. pass rate of, in Bobo of, of, and of, a 90% of, exemption of which I don't know but I can tell you that sure. it cares year in year out does not have a 100% bachelor's pass whereas St. John's does you know sure. so already by putting my kids in grade 8 the probability of him getting a a bachelor's pass in matric is at 100% versus here which is at 80% that's I, one I thing I know. I don't think kids is at 80, but okay. You know. No, I'm saying with you, they don't have, because they don't have it 100 every year. Sure. Is what I'm trying to say. I know they pass the kids. I'm talking about a bachelor's pass to university. Okay. You know. So now I look at things like your co-curricular programs. Yeah, but at this one school, doing your cultural items is compulsory. At this other one, it's an optional. You have so, to mention the schools. So, so at, at St. Pri- John's, at, private school, at St. St. John's, from my experience, it is a compulsory to do a cultural thing, sure. you know. So ideally, I wanted my boy to play the piano, you know. But then, again, having a 10% to say, lost the vote. I lost the vote and he does the violin. Whereas here, from my understanding, it is an optional extra, you know. So those variables. Here, doing something, going to chapel, you know, as a Christian school is compulsory. Mm. Here, being a government school cares, it is an option, you know. So again, if we just look at... Um, at the core of a of 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 a of a Christian school mm. versus the core of a government school, which is moved away from religion, the pillars here are built on morality. The pillars here are built on just understanding each other and respect. Well, the constitution, but the okay. constitution, constitutional yeah, and human rights, yeah, and, and human things. rights. So, give me as a father, if I had to choose, and again, I would rather a strong. Christian school mm. versus a con- strong constitutional school, if I can call it that. Sure. You know, so give me, I'm looking at that. And then I look at sports, you know, having coach sports at all different levels. I'm saying for my average child who goes into these schools here, CARES is an exceptionally strong sports school. Mm. What does that mean? It means that when we're talking about um, rugby, because I'm comparing CARES to St. John's. Sure. When I'm saying rugby, we're saying CARES is way stronger than St. John's. Mm. But when we talk about overall sports, are they stronger than them at hockey? No. Mm. Are they stronger than them at um, water polo? Mm, depends on the year. Are they stronger at cricket? No. Are they stronger at rugby? Yes. Are they stronger at rowing, at squash? Are they stronger at uh, the athletics events such as the pole vault, the hammer throw? So it gives my child an opportunity to shine in areas where here he might be funneled to rugby. Mm. Here he's got more options to shine. 
the basketball. If Uzita decided to become, or if he was a top basketball player, I know he's better off being at St. John's than being at Kes. If Uzita was better at hockey, he's better at St. John than at Kes. If Uzita was better at uh, archery, it's mm. better at St. John's than Kes. So, ba- ballet. Ballet. It's better Gymnastics. at St. John's. Uh, better at they what? Uh? Please carry on. So, Fuck. so when I look at those two amazing schools, if Uzit is a great rugby player and he's a man's man and a boy's boy, I put him in that space where he'll be given that masculine. It's great what I've seen. However, I know Guti, if he's a normal boy, the options that he will have available at St. John's far from my experience. Why, why did you say earlier that you wish your boys would go to Kes? Because, again, at Kes, it's that masculine, mascul- masculine, masculine energy. I feel it more there than I feel it at St. John's. But you still prefer private schools? I need to, I was using as a I hear, societal. I, hear. I was using a societal. But that, I started at the beginning and I said, this is me and you, though. Yes, you, you were like, it, for a moment, can you entertain? Yes. And then you made it your whole argument. No, yeah, of course. Because, I need to what I mean? And then you made specific na, examples na, of St. John's na, and Kes. Let me tell you. No, don't speak to so Machi. Don't speak to me. Yes, I want to answer it my way. And I'm giving you my answer. So we were talking about what private a rubbish versus answer. public. Ah, uh, cool and cool. I was talking about private versus public and I said this. And I said, I, I asked when it your comes personal to me, opinion. And then you were ah, like, society, nah. please yes. allow me. But then you made it yeah. your whole argument. So now when it comes to that, what school do I think? For society, if you have the means, go to St. John's over a case. And for you personally? For me, fuck. Be- because I want them to go through a more masculine space, I'd put them in a case. You, Even be- you believe that government schools are better than private schools? No. <sighs> for your children? <laughs> I believe that private schools are better for your children. I need children. to give me an umbrella again. I'm you, not giving you any umbrella. No, you, you, if you want to go case versus St. John's, I can no, have a, a say. No. No, I had you, I you had your chance. I had you had your chance I believe that to private, answer on your that, own rubbish I believe, way. I believe that private schools are better. You answered in your pop rubbish, I that annoying are crap way. I believe that private schools are better. You believe your sons are better at a private school than a government at a school. private school than a government school. Hundred percent. And you prefer also single sex over co-ed. As an umbrella, yes. <sighs> so fucking tiring. Yeah. Um, your but th- th- your thoughts wait, when it's so t- this, uh, 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 what a strong uh, no, I, didn't me- I didn't make examples uh, I don't uh, want to make the examples Makar, uh, verse, I don't, don't want to make examples that Papa was you Nana, uh, you went from Newcastle to St. John's bro that I, was, I, I, I had to stop I, you I literally gave you all the options that I knew no you, that's okay you but that was such a bad about, example about uh, your thoughts on your thoughts on English medium schools versus Afrikaans medium schools that's actually an interesting one because not 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 this one this one is now more generic yeah. uh, more than for you specifically and it's not race specific as well. Yeah. So so when when I think of the the English versus Afrikaans, my stomach is not like I I look at it differently and I say there's there's a reason why me and you specifically get attracted to Afrikaans schools, you know, and a lot of guys that we chill with whenever we go into those spaces is attractive because I see it as the the one is more liberal versus the one is more conservative. You know, so the one from a cultural moving, you have one or vision, the one is mom versus dad type of thing. You know, the one is more loose, you know, be cool, do your hair, you know, speak. You get to, you know, look at, you know, adults and yes, John, oh, hey, how are you? Versus the other one has structure, you know. So your typical African schools that we are exposed to have a lot of structure, have a lot of culture, have a lot of masculine energy. You know, they are conservative and they hold to their values. Whereas the English schools speak to the liberal, the understanding, the caring. And it now all depends on the type of energy that you want to put your child in. You know, so do you want to put your child in a space where they can be liberal? You know, they can be, I'm cool, I'm this, I to dye my hair blue, I, you know, whatever. Or this here with structure. The Afrikaans boys are definitely more structured than the English boys. Which schools do you think are better? In Jobang it depends on what you're looking for. Yes, which sc- do you, which schools, would I'll slow I, it down. With I, I, with I. Which schools do you think you're better without being diplomatic for the whole world? I'm allowed to answer it in my way. Why? why Fuck why, answering in why? your way. <laughs> which schools do you think <laughs> are better? <laughs> We've heard your pop. 
I, but if I'm you're saying you prefer liberal and if you're more struck yeah no, Zwile no, Mandela no mbuzu ukuthi wena which schools you think are better eh ngitetele ngiphendule yabona ka phendule ke just us yes us malema hey as yabona laba o bani o make you want to be it's wanna be newcastle high not want to be what fucking grow up in bantu education is this bantu education this make you want to be What's that? It's you. It's a wanna be. It's you. When were you born, bro? Hey, 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 hey. So, which man, schools do you think man, are better? Man, I'm pending. Ni mega njani ngoba upenduli. If I'm a Mac G, you know if I'm a Mac G wanna be, do you know who you are? Wait, wait, do you know who you are? Of Piers Morgan. If I'm a Mac G wanna be, you know when, when you are introduces people, he doesn't let them finish, eh? And it's also come comment. Why don't you let your brother speak? Why's up all? Hey, no they comment. won't, because you've been chatting for fucking ever. This is meant to be a chat between me and you. No, but go to my camera. Hey, fuck my camera. Which school do you think is better? Let me finish then. Why are you not finishing? Do this with your lips? I will not fucking do that. I'll pause it. 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 I'll Kona ndo ifakele apha when you are veza when kancane kancane ukuthi khona you wish were made to did it was a waza la i know you wish were made to did it when fulu wa when uzobo asha when bila mangu did when u asha wena wena mangu did uvuna ngenza ni yabona wena yazuba when yazinoba uzi drop your knees bend your feet do you know how to have a conversation i can if i don't get disturbed that's not a conversation No 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 no. I mang at the point I'm mess with shy point yakho. No, but the point mele iphele. Manje wena umbebe umbebe ngithi lula wena lula. Imbebe befetha iphele. Shisa umlomo wena. Ukuthi thula uthi Show me the interact one. Just show me for 15 minutes how to do it so I can learn. Show me for 15 minutes. Please show me for 15 minutes how to keep quiet and listen. So it comes can up you, can you show me when I will now. When it comes to African schools and what? English schools, when it comes to You're COVID schools, kissing on your nostrils, when when it, that's it. <sighs> you misogynist. Hey, Kuluma, man. You ban ban sex. Kuluma. I truly believe it is based on what you <sighs> value. I personally, oh, for my kids, I'm tired. I'm going to tell you. I personally value structure and I value that masculine energy. The reason why I value it is because I don't I don't get to plant it into my kids as much as I'd like to. And therefore, I would send my child as a blanket statement if it's English versus Afrikaans, those Afrikaans schools that have more structure than the English schools. Uh almost all Afrikaans schools are government, public, mm-hmm. and are co-ed. Yeah. Is the argument that government co-ed African schools are superior to private English schools? Yeah. So in a the ones that I'm thinking about. Sure. Yeah. So in a because I'm a, not thinking about Amayuba versus Amayuba has become an English medium. Well, when I remember it. Sure. I'm not thinking of Amayuba. I'm a, thinking Ama, of Amayuba. Uh, yeah, Amayuba. That's why you should not. I'm thinking your Monas co-ed government school uh i'm thinking of your waterkloof mm. covid government school you know so that's where i'm thinking you know is it palkham that's where i'm going covid government school those are really strong schools mm. i'm not thinking of you would, know, would you consider school. sending the boys to an african school no why not um i wouldn't because i still think that a lot of the schools have a tint of white superiority or of a con superiority and i don't want my it's, kids it's more than at, at the white english schools yeah yeah at the the white english schools um looking at the staff and how the staff are oh, there, there's so many people that look like them um so from leadership positions you mm. know so again with my son the number one staff member uh, the headmaster is a black man so he gets to look at a black man run a school you know so whereas your general african schools that i'm envisioning we're thinking about their staff 
that doesn't look like it. Yeah. You know, whereas when you do get that black teacher that looks like him is like this maybe the Zulu teacher or whatever, some teacher, you know, that doesn't is not senior management and doesn't have as much weight. There's a person that I know that you're thinking about that teaches at a school in Newcastle that used to the Ferrum school. And if that is why are you even mentioning names? No, but we know this guy. I'm not mentioning a name. But you don't have to mention it like that. Okay, I take it back. I'm not mentioning Ferrum. I'm not mentioning that guy. But again, I can just imagine the difference between how students view him versus view the headmaster. And I want my kids to be in a space where, even if it has a tint of whatever, they're like, well, look at all the decision makers. They look like me. It's chalk. Okay. Uh, I won't give my views on public versus private and co-ed versus single sex and Afrikaans versus English. We haven't done the co-ed versus single I, sex per se. Well, I asked your opinion and, and you gave it because I, I did ask in the question. No, because if, 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 if I went into it, I would have started off by saying the problem with single sex schools is that they tend to um, financially do a better on average than co-ed schools. You know, because the single sex schools are your top schools, your CARES, your JPs, your private schools, you know, um, St. John's, your St. Stidians, your Rodines, those tend to be single sex schools versus your average co ed school is Iskele Sasilukshin. You know, so if I'm saying what I send my child to the average single sex school versus the average co ed school, the single sex school is far superior, just purely based from a resource point. Yeah, bueno, so it's, it's an unfair metric to just judge purely single sex versus COVID. If you had a daughter, would you also prefer for her to go to a private single sex school? Yeah. Um, what do you think is the future of education? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Yo, I used to I used to have all these answers for you, like back in the day. Mundasa is how we teach. We had COVID I, lockdown and people started teaching virtually. Uh, we've got things like robotics coming in. We've got more liberalism coming in, yeah. especially with the the English private schools. There's a lot of yeah. what we call wokeness. You yeah. know, there's kids are being allowed to do whatever hairstyles they want. Yeah. Kids are kind of allowed to identify with whatever gender they want. Yeah. There's a lot of speak talk about diversity yeah. and, and those kind of things. Whereas the more traditional government and let's say more African schools, mm. they're still very conservative in you can only be male and female. Your hair must be like this. Mm. That's it. Not just Afrikaans, but even the traditional yeah. uh, government schools. But the more private English schools are more. Hey, Lunga, so yeah. that's just the one aspect. But there's yeah. robotics. There's maybe artificial intelligence, I, computers, uh, remote learning. I can't talk post-COVID. Because mm. Ngembele, it covered through everything. You know, if you speak to, to, to most teachers, they'll tell you, Guti, where their kids are now let's say you talk about a grade six child, mm. you know, and they'll say, hey, when I taught grade six in 2019, the kids were at this level. Sure. And now when I'm teaching them now, they just seem back, you know. COVID, that two years from 2020 to 2021, took so much out of kids, mm. you know, from the interactions. You know, now your, your, your little child, your five-year-old is interacting with an adult all day, talking to a screen all day, you know, playing PlayStation all day. You know, so all those things took away from Ingane playing outside, playing sports, you know, um, being in the jungle with their peers, learning the pecking order, the hierarchy, how to speak to teachers. Out. So that threw everything out the way. Uh, 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 yeah. And then you add AI and then you add the, the robotics. I We're in 2024 now, and if you were to do a snapshot of 2019, do you think anything has changed? If we were to go from 2019 and jump to 2024, mm. is schooling th still the same? No, no, no. It's, it's extremely what, what, different. What has changed? It's extremely different. So let's just look at policies, for example. Mm. You know, so from policies, policies have been scrapped. Hair policies. From Mo 2019 to from 2024? From 2019 to 2024. For the every school? For for most schools that I know. Okay. The, the hair policy. You know, now it's words like hair must be neat. Okay. Ah, that would be very, very detailed. Sure. You know, um, your identity. You know, um, for the every school, for the every school. Do you think a lot of the government schools are embracing of uh, people that were born male identifying as I, I, girls and, I, I, and transgenders? I think most schools are shitting themselves with that type of topic. So I don't care how staunchly structured you are. Mm. If a child were to come with those type of tendencies um, of being fluid, okay. the school headmaster mm. will shit himself.
or herself or whatever yeah. the case may be because from 2019 to 2024 that space has just taken a whole world of its own you know so it is much like um that stereotypical african school having that black child walk in you know it's it's so different where they just say okay let's rather just 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 leave them because mm. i know so many schools where a boy would come to school with a dress and the the, the staff was just like leave him like pretend like a simbon the school uniform says that all the boys must wear pants. This person's wearing a dress. And the school literally, I know a boy who came, school said nothing. It was, it was, I'm not it was, is what braids. Braids. Mm. The school never traced, the school never said, hey, can we have a conversation, kid? The school literally just pretended as if boy in a fate and carried on. And they, and they allowed that boy to go into a girl's bathroom. They they allowed that boy, would see the school now is 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 is, is a co ed space, so they allowed the boy to to embrace now fully into um what at that time boy now girl and they can go into the girls part now they are now now they have according to them are now fully embraced in how they've always felt as a girl so now they move purely as the gender that they assign or their true belief which is female and that's what they are am I, am I syllabus are still the same the the sports is still the same 2019 to 2024? No, everything has changed. So from the sports point, um, schools are struggling financially. So the big schools, at least, they're mm. struggling. So scholarships are down. Crazy. Why are you they know. struggling? What do you mean why are they studying? They're struggling? The financial market is, is tough. You look at the oh, school. Oh, that, like, that's got to do with like the economy. Yeah, not just the economy, but like even uh, you look at sports like basketball having taken over. You know, schools like Dale. Dale no longer gives rugby scholarships. You no, know? no, I'm trying to figure out what changed between 2019 and 2024. The, the economic situation. Economic situation. Oh, you okay. know, and again, because of lockdown, it changed the landscape. So, so many boys no longer want to play like a rugby. You know, so many boys don't want to play long format cricket. Because if you are stuck at home for two years and you don't need to play uh, 50 overs on a Saturday, and Vale, I didn't like it, Vale. Mm. Now I'm given a choice to play like a sports like basketball that takes an hour. Or now schools are introducing esports, you know, uh, well, the privileged schools. Why would I not go into that? Because that's what I was doing for the past two years. Yeah. You know, you've got kids that are, everything is about TikTok. You know, so uh, schools are battling with, with cell phones, you know, because now... Are cell phones allowed in schools? They're now? not allowed to at schools. Uh -huh. But again, kids are saying that these are uh, tools of education. Yeah. You know, because I can't afford, if you go to a government school, you have kids that will say things like, I can't afford textbooks. Therefore, I've got screenshots Sure. of my friend's textbook so when I'm using my phone I'm actually using it as an academic tool you know hey, and that's dope that's a lecker that's a lecker cheat for kids so now say, so tell the school I can't afford textbooks you know, so, so, now so I need you, my phone because I downloaded this bad boy don't don't worry about yeah. the internet and the notifications So, so but I'm here studying kids, kids are going through a whole lot of mental challenges anxiety depression from where it was in 2019 to where it is in 2024 from my experiences, yar, ingani manji tengani anxiety disorder. Abasa pala ma test. Hey, why? No, cause it triggers the anxiety. Are we are we gonna at some point move away from homework? Are we gonna move away from traditional testing and examinations? Mm. Schools, many schools took away homework. Many schools took away homework, but Yo, this was, more of them must. This this, this was I hate th homework. This was before COVID, and then for some reason, well, not for some reason, they brought it back post COVID. Because they felt that that two-year gap was a they lost a lot of teaching time. I so hate homework. schools have gone back into. You know why I hate homework? I, I I don't like homework as well. Do you know why I hate homework? No, I hate homework because the average parent is not equipped to assist a child with homework. Yeah, and the expectation that the parents must be involved. I understand the luminari. Yeah, yeah. I understand the triangle. Yeah. Parent, child, school. school yeah. Um, but the reality is like. Parents send their kids to school because they believe the teacher knows better. Yeah. I am 38 years old. I don't fucking remember long division. Mm. I don't remember how to label a locust. Mm. So when you bring that to my kid, as much as you'd like me to often bond with my kid, I could... Amoeba. 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 I didn't do paoloji. <laughs> I was uh, studying art. I wanted to be a visual artist. <laughs> okay. So I didn't study these weird uh, courses like geography <laughs> that get you nowhere, cumulonimbus clouds and the stratus. No. Um, I, I, I think it's unfair. And look, some of us are 
a, a bit better educated. We can help yeah. our kids all with homework. Yeah. But I imagine the average township parent, some mm. of them who actually come home late because of transports, they're sure. coming from what what at seven, and the kids getting shouted at. You didn't do your homework. Mm. Mom, please, can you get involved? You're like, mm. no, fuck you, bro. Yeah. What would what would be better than homework for schools that believe in homework? Yeah. Is letting the kids stay after school for an extra hour and finding teachers or finding top students, mm. which would be great for their own portfolios to be like, yeah. help each other and do extra work. That's fine. But sending you home where yeah. the child is tired from school, academic uh, learning, the child is tired from sports and culture, uh, the child wants to go home and, and unplug and relax. Mm. The child wants to bond with their parents. Dad, mm. how was your day? Mm. How are you? The child maybe wants to be on their phone, mm. watch TV. The parents is tired. Mm. I've been working all day till five. I had to be in traffic. I Now you're asking me to sit with this fucking thing and go over That's like whatever. I, I hate homework for that reason. Not because I have a problem with children doing extra learning. Mm. especially on their own. Mm. Not because I'm against parents bonding with their kids mm. and having a vested interest in, mm. in the child's learning. Mm. But the dynamics of how we live make homework a serious pain for a lot of parents. And and uh, it's a no from me. Mina, Mina, my main reason why I hate homework is it takes away from parent-child time. Which which could it's, be it's, we doing anything. It's, it's our time. It's, don't, it's, don't dictate it's, that it's, we must It's almost this. like if I'm coaching boys rugby, and then when are you there busy telling me to do some tennis joke? No, no, no. It's rugby time. Sure. You know, at when it's tennis time, let it be tennis time. When my boys are in my geography class, it's geography. I don't want you to be sneaking in your maths homework. It's geography. You know, so after school, you're after school and it's my time. Because mm. there's also certain lessons that I want to teach them. I want to teach them about cooking and cleaning. I want to teach them about gardening. I want to teach them about washing the cars. Family there's history. Family history. You know, I want us to watch and laugh over whatever TV sitcom. You know, that's our time. Yeah. You know, Black so give, my wife and kids. You know, so gi give me that's that's my biggest uh, 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 with 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 uh, with homework. And on top of that, it, it just that that whole argument of you just reinforcing what we taught at school. I was like, no. You must reinforce what you teach, sure. you know, at a later stage. You know, school is full of nonsensical uh, uh, lessons sure. throughout the day. You know, keep the main thing the main thing and then you'll have enough time to teach and reinforce, you know, within the, the school hours. Do you think you school know? should last longer? Four, four things like that <clears throat> and add to the curriculum. So school starts from, let's say, seven, eight. Mm. And then it goes until let's say four, where it incorporates extra work, sports, culture for for everyone. So, so I, especially because the parents are working. As, I was about to say, which is school is a part of society, mm. and the big problem that we have within society is that we've created a society where parents are working from let's say nine to five. Yeah. You know, with traffic, you know, add all those things. Yeah. You know, and then you have let's say a daycare that says no school finishes at twelve. I hate that. Now, and then you now, must pay extra. Now, now and or, after or, care or, is also or, extra. Or, or some don't even have that extra. You have to fetch you know? the child at twelve. So now you have to fetch the child at twelve and, and have a nanny. And then have a nanny. So it that school doesn't plug into society at large. You know, some of us we work throughout the year. You know, we have twenty days leave throughout the year. Now you're gonna go and you say there's a school holiday which is four weeks long. You know. You've not considered or ness, I'm a police. You haven't considered people that work in a corporate space. You haven't considered a bunch of seven a garage. You haven't considered a bunch of seven a spa. You know, you've just said for four weeks, figure out what's going to happen with this yeah, child. Figure it out. You know, teachers are here. Ah, you know, but the rest of society, we we have these kids and we're like, where help are the us. teachers? Ah. Hey, I cheat. Nah. I cheat. And the rest of society is like we screwed. What what do we do then? So I believe in a way of finding some sort of balance. I like the fact that the academics can be in the morning, you know, and then from the morning, then it becomes uh, sports or whatever the case culture. may be. And then culture, uh, you're born the type Maybe of thing. Maybe even do a bit of academics later. Yeah, whatever the case. But While you're but, still fresh, you know, hardcore maths and what, what? Whatever the case may play, be. play, run, sing. Yeah, um, and then later sorry. on, maybe a bit of the English, what, and what? Or the soft, and, and then have like the softer skills that we need for life, you know, the changing of tires, you know, the, the home economics type of things to plug in so that when you do go back into the home environment, you can then add. Add value. You, you know, instead of Do you think just this could be the future of education? Or, I, or it I, should it, be. It should be. I don't think We it can drive be. it, by the way. Platforms like this are meant to be not, not only for us to fantasize, but yeah. for us to speak these things into existence e because e there, are, there are ears listening. Imagine if your grade six or grade seven in that four to five hour band or three to five they at school and they chopping and they 
preparing the meal and then by the time you come back from home they've got the casserole dish and they've, they've got the food, food. Those, those those type of things you know so we can only romanticize and, and pray that it, it, it comes to existence but if the day was longer that's how i would package it sure you know in and then have the saturdays because again <clears throat> us corporate guys are excited that we work from Monday to Friday. Yeah. However, we do understand that the majority of people that do work, Abbasibenza will pick and pay and the likes, they still work on the Saturdays and the Sundays and yeah. the public holidays, you know, type of thing. You know, so how can we incorporate all of that? Entrepreneurs are kind of failing to plug in these things uh, to solve these problems because they're huge problems. Yes, they create industries like nannies and mm. aftercare, but it's, you almost want to, you know, like the sports clubs in, in mm. England mm -mm. where kids, after school, they go to their sports club. Mm. You almost wish everyone knows when kids finish school, they all go to these centers where they do extra work. I, I, I don't a, think we, we, we understand as a South Africa, Gutini, what's an entrepreneur? You know, I, I think Gutini is a challenge. You be entrepreneur. So if you have people that think like that, you know, versus what I, I might be understanding wrong, but you are seeing an entrepreneur as a problem solver, yeah. as a person who's going to come and help the greater society using their skill, whatever. Yeah. Abed, they, they're not saying, hey, how can I solve problems? They just say, hey, it's to solve I make my money? problem. Okay, as in thing, Sure. You know, and how does that plug into greater society? Ukraine. You know, so entrepreneur, some guy, sorry, just to go off topic, was like, hey, Pinson, uh, I work a nine to five. I'm quite frustrated. How can I, uh, please can you guide me in how I can quit my job and become an entrepreneur? I'm like, hey, wait. Point number one, don't quit your job. Point number very, two. Very important. Yeah, point number two. The first rule of Fight Club is <laughs> point don't number, quit your job. Point number two, don't be an entrepreneur. You know, and I was like, point number three, find a hobby that makes you money. Full stop, sin, nothing else. That's dope advice. Yeah, because I feel no, like... No, no, no. As much as you're like, eh, number one, don't quit your job. Number two... Yeah. What is number two? Don't be an entrepreneur. Don't become an <laughs> entrepreneur. Number three, find a hobby that can make you money. Yeah. It's good advice. Those are... Yeah, well, thank you. U uniform. You the know? future of uniform in schooling. That uniform is dying. It's dying. Yeah, it's a dying thing. Um, it's dying if you... You, you ask me about the Curo schools or the, the Redhams or whatever the case may be. A lot of them are going to the golf t-shirts, you know, type of like uh, Chino type of jeans. Mm. Uh, you're seeing a lot of the schools going into going away from the the tie, mm. you know. So again, it's it's almost like very um, colonial the tie and the white mm, shirt and the polished cause shoes because it, go, it goes into that, that whole corporate model of wearing a suit going to work. Yeah, you know, um, blazer, the blazer, and you have a, a, a whole generation of kids that want to show you the identity who I am. You know, you go to these schools, you've seen it at Saint Stephen's, Saint John's, but for yeah. straight baggy, all these type of different hairstyles to show their identity yeah. and again given an opportunity I don't see them coming to school dressed in it's great for us as parents to see that uniformity and structure mm. because it speaks to that to me like wow I'm so proud seeing the boys sitting together the structure the, mm. for the boy who's sitting in the stand just like hey Shazi right now I'd be wearing my this and my that mm. I'd look fresh you know so I think the uniform is a dying thing we, we grew up in a time where we were like the first black whether yeah. the first black kid in a school, the first black head prefect, yeah. the first black whatever, which means we were in spaces that were overwhelmingly white. Yeah, um, Our parents believed there were better schools, better mm. facilities, better resources in, in the suburbs from coming from the township. Mm. I'm meeting more and more black parents mm. who are sending their kids to African schools, mm. almost chasing the same thing. Because again, the child becomes the first black, the first whatever. And it seems like the African schools are seemingly better than the English schools um, mm. because a lot of the government X Model C are becoming very black mm. and in becoming very black part of what black parents fight for is lower school fees mm. which means the school has less resources for extra teachers mm. sports facilities and the school starts dilapidating mm. because of that of course people don't have money if they did they, they'd pump mm. um, do you think there might be a chance that look Afrikaans is, is a language Yeah, it, it also is a culture Sure. do you think we may see a shift because if people had money, we'd see a shift from government to mm. private. Mm. But do you think we will see a shift from, I guess, what you were calling less structured to more structured, mm. of which you may find that some of the schools that have that, mm. or most of the schools that have that are, are, are African schools? 
I, I, there's there's two points that I want to raise, and the one is is a question to you. Being in a space where we were the first black, you know, predominantly white Afrikaans, do you ever think and process of all the negative effects that being in a space like that came with, you know, where uh, maybe there was an inferiority complex and, you know, that maybe is still there, you know, when you see an Afrikaans person, whatever the case may be. I'm like, and, yeah, ba- yeah, yeah, boss. You know. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, man, man, yeah, this was the acne. It's a man, Rob. How? I can see you. Oh. It's a man, Afrikaans. Ek is baie jammer, af die verre, dit was, <laughs> 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 was Julius Malema. <laughs> so, and, and just the negatives, you know, because there's always that thing of, if if the playing fields were fair, you know you would have been head boy, you know, but it wasn't, unfortunately. I and was head boy. Well, under. But under. At least, I was there. Because now I've got things about head boy. But anyway, we must so, shut this thing down. We're so talking no, for no, too but, long. But but that's the, the the first part. So you've got a question for me that yeah, I need to answer. Sure. And the and the second part that I have is, I have a problem with Tina Zabantu Mnyama going into these spaces, uh, because we're attracted to these spaces. You know, you 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 see the gym and you see people that train at the gym, you know, and you see their muscles and their the health oh, and the. Have you seen you the know. gym at St John's there by the field? Of course, yes. <laughs> you know, so. You, you're attracted to the gym and then Tina, as I'm in we go into that space and then once we're in that space that has been created for this, whatever this may be, then we want to start changing it. You know, we go there and we say, how are you playing David Gale? So all of a sudden, it gym then becomes, goes from a, a health club to being a club club. Yeah. And then, and then we look for the next thing that they, they've built, you know, and like, oh my God, and Tina, we were the black generation that went from Emakasi, whatever the case may be, into white spaces. Yeah. And then we went into the white spaces, and then again, we weren't maintaining the homes like the white people were doing. We weren't doing this. We weren't, and then those places then started becoming dilapidated. And then we ran to the new white spaces. So again, we went to the new causal highs. We we don't like the fact that it's an Afrikaans headmaster. We liked it when we were on the outside looking in. We don't like the fact that the choir sings majority Afrikaans songs, but that was attracting uh, attractive to us. Now for for from challenge, for try quicho now, you know we Re- representation is what it's we, called. So, but sharp. Then yeah. we go there. We talk about we 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 attracted. We go there, but we don't want to go to gym. We don't want to wake up in the morning. We don't want to plow into the schools. And then the new causal life falls apart. Then we go to the new schools, the the, the, the private schools. You know, I was at a dads and lads camp with the Untans. You know, we meant to camp. It's by the dam we meant to camp. Can can black fathers not come in I'm a, I'm a caravan? Ah, allow them. Allow them to represent themselves. They were camping so, in the caravan. So, so Mina, those caravans looked way better than majority of these one bedroom studio apartments and I was like wow that's that's a dope so, father doing okay. his best sharp great now I'm watching the the white parents that have pitched tents that are brying that are fishing that are doing what the bro that look like the cover of the brochure ne? with the with the, the fire and the, the marshmallows and they doing that that's what attracted us when we saw it I'm just going, we, we're going to keep going there in our numbers. It's going to become a huge Mapiano draw. And then we're going to be like, ah, we don't want... And then we're going to look across to what they're doing at Halbmakar or Monas or at... Noord Yevel. Noord Yevel, Train, Horizon, Orion. We're going to be looking Marie at those Fulion. schools. Keep ne? going, boy. Africans are worse than Soga. But you said you wanted representation. So, so you wanted so your kids to see oh, stuff that looked no, like. No, no, I was just generalizing. Mina, I'm okay. that I'm that father that pitched the tent and did the bride. Oh, you're the you black know. white father. I'm that father that That's does the boy roles. Black and white. Because I'm buying into the culture. So of, when, white, of whiteness. Whatever the culture may be. So if I come but to we your want gym, representation. We want Gucci. If, if if I no and glamping, do not glamping us. I have no idea what glamping. Glamorous, is. glamorous uh, camping. 
Wow. The clamping. That's what those timers were doing. So I don't mind things changing because the whole world will change. Everything changes. Now go Africa, you know, but if you bind to a culture, for the most part, and bind to the culture, you know, so Master Chimin, for the most part, binds to the Chimin, you Chim. They didn't send you their know. kids to St. John's for camping. Hear me out. So yeah, yeah. It's not just the camping. Camping is the one aspect. You know, we see it from the rugby field. You, you know, want for, from from cricket. You know, most of these schools are struggling with, with cricket. The numbers of crickets are disappearing. You know, the number of crickets of cricket players, whatever it's called. And now it's everybody's playing. Everybody's playing basketball. You you're know, a cricket. If which, you play cricket. Anyway, before when young young get him looming, and now basketball is. Why not get him looming? Omazi, you're from America. That is that owns a big record label. Have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> swallowed. AOTDJ has got Carry on with anyway, your paparante. So, I said you must shut so, this thing yes, down. Yes, you keep talking. Just, just let me finish. So now you have basketball, mm. you know, that has taken over from cricket. You know, it's taken over from water polo. Understanding that the old boys are putting money for cricket. They're putting money for water polo. They're building these aquatic centers, whatever the case may be. Tina Zabazal, we're not putting money for the basketball. And basketball comes with a certain culture, you know, that American, yeah, man, hey, ha, ha. Hey, Jordans. You know, so again, it comes with a certain, on the rugby field, you score a try, you have a high five. Basketball, from what people are seeing and watching on TV, you do a dunk or a layup, whatever the case is, all those type of things. So again, you're going to slowly watch the culture of these schools turning into something that wasn't attractive for parents when we first initially said, I'd love to send my child there. And it's going to happen with African schools if we don't work on us first as a Bantabam Nyama and say, if I put my child in there, for the most part, am I happy for my child to speak Afrikaans, wear shorts in winter? Am I happy for the most part that my child does uh, a kur and believes in guns and prays before he has his, his breakfast? And if for the most part it's a yes, then send your child there. Do you know if you own land, you don't feel the cold in winter when you're wearing a no, cold? No, how, co- co- how do you feel cold when you have hectares? Even when you walk barefoot or if you swim in the dam. Oh, you can't feel if cold. You own, if you own I, land, you don't feel cold. I have you only feel cows. cold if you, don't have, if you don't have land. No, no, no. I'll tell you flat in your cold. Sure, it's very Yeah, I'm a flat, I have band. But if you're staying and you have land and cows. If you wish, if you wear shorts in winter and you get cold, you must you must know you don't own land. Oh. If you own land, you don't ah, feel cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're walking and you get tired, then you know what you're wearing the wrong shoes. Because if you put on some fellies, boy, you can walk for kilometers. You know, for, and for a trek. Ah. Yeso. With Kurt Darren. <laughs> Steve Hoffmeyer. <laughs> Lacker Treffers. And uh, what? Soms. Soms. Uh, Soms. 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 <laughs> I'm tired of talking to you, man. I want to shut this thing down. Uh, I, uh, I hope we covered everything. There's one topic we didn't cover. Uh, which which we'll leave for, le- for next time. Your thoughts on co-parenting versus single parenting. Which is almost circling back. Ah, can you give me one minute? No, one minute. You don't know. What I went. I went on parents.com we don't, we don't for this. Need, we don't need a. Par- I went on parents.com for we this. We don't need a Doctor Strange multiverse. Sorry, one minute. Sorry, guys. That last I, was, seven years. I was. I was. I was watching these reels on Instagram, and I didn't know how true they were because this is American-based study. I think our memory single cards are running out. Single father households. Are the memory cards not running out? Single father households Fuck. are more successful in raising kids versus dual parent households and single moms. That's, parent. That, com. that study was probably written by a man or I, done by I, a man. I went to parents.com. I went to there's a couple. I'm I'm happy to write it in the Those websites the are comments. probably owned by men. All of them. Yeah. Okay, people do your own research. Do you know a woman that owns a website? Do you know? What kind of website is it? The fashion. <laughs> Makeup. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> That, that, was, that was just a crap. That was just a crap. But I think, I think those research things, I don't trust research and data. Because I didn't trust those reels. Because you can't be like, oh, it was Instagram you, real. Your so I went out argument, of my way. Your argument is that single parent households headed by a father yeah. are more successful than dual parent households. Mm-hmm. And obviously. And you and your argument single. would be that uh, there's many reasons. Fa- fathers are better there's, parents. There's, there's many reasons. There's can so I, can many I, factors. Can I have counter? Even though okay. I don't want us to carry on talking. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. You know, when you do some of this data, right? Yeah. Uh, people love percentages. Percentages sure. are extremely misleading. 100%. Steve Compella speaks about a bikini. What it covers, uh, you know, you know, you expose, but the, the, the juicy parts we want to see are covered. <coughs> Statistics are very shady, man. And yeah, you depending, have to unpack them. Depending on who's pushing propaganda, mm. it'll be either pro or against. Yeah. Percentages are misleading because if we were to look at the number of number one, Single mother-headed households versus, versus dual parent versus single father. Yeah, the numbers would be crazy. They they so skewed. Hundred percent. 
then you have to go deeper into the research and ask mm. who did they survey they probably mm. surveyed the father who's willing to to survey fill yeah. in a survey 100%. and and so you know it, it really no no the, 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 i fully agree the, the no 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 I, I'm, you, and i'm not you have I'm not, to unpack stats. I'm, I'm not arguing against or for anything yeah what i do know and what i will say is this fathers that want to parent from what i've seen including mm. myself and mm. maybe you 60% 65% <laughs> mm-hmm. fathers who want to parent mm. tend to be way better parents than anyone I you can you why why would you maybe me cuz me nanga funu parent mos ang funu parent there's the desire and then there's the real <laughs> you must choose which one are you wishing or are you doing pick one pick one struggle my friend you don't see it alone so ah uh-huh. fathers who who want to parent tend yeah. to go over and above and beyond yeah. and because like Tupac Shakur mm. they they are masculine mm. but they are willing to learn the feminine they tend to be very dynamic yeah a single mother tends to come with the assumptions like whiteness yeah they're like well I'm a mom I'm a nurturer I know I know so yeah. she never has to venture into masculinity that's true whereas a father has to go out of himself to learn to nurture which becomes mm. unique and new mm. but mm. he's also masculine so he doesn't have to go and outsource mm. that and it, it's it's foreign terrain it's like wanting to teach a foreign language the way a non speaker of that language will teach mm. will be much better than the, the actual mother tongue than the mother tongue because yeah, the mother yeah, tongue yeah. takes it for granted yeah yeah the person who had to learn will be like do you know that is an adverb of the adjective yeah. of the pronoun and you're yeah. like hey baba The, the English speakers like mm. what the hell are you talking about because it still shocks me so much when in the comments when we have these talks and you have like females saying hey I'm raising a son so I'm now going out of my way to try and learn certain things from men yeah because Tina's cooler from a generation where all my mates weren't going out of their way generally speaking no. to get information from men about how to raise a boy a boy yeah whereas your stereotypical father if he has ki- uh, daughters he will find out you know so I, I, you, you I also agree. find mothers in that same vein yeah you find mothers being slightly more sensitive to raising sons than raising daughters for the same dynamic mm. that with the daughter they take everything for granted mm. why are you so lazy why are you mm. with the boy it's just like are you okay boy did you eat mm. are you sure you, there's like an extra yeah. care because I don't really know Is yeah, your penis fine? Did yeah, you pee cause, okay cause, with the girl? It's like what the hell? Yeah, because moms, moms tend to be, from my experience, moms tend to be very much softer to their sons. Sure, there's a versus sensitivity their, versus their daughters, which is why maybe yeah. sons would love their moms so much uh, in terms of the extra sensitivity. Whereas daughters would be like, oh, I love my mom, is, but is, is, is that why I want to bring my single mom? I don't think that's the politically correct correct term. No, I've, I've actually asked I've actually asked gay gay men but see. what what the official uh, let's call it nguni term is for for gay people but see. they haven't been able to give me one and the one I did ask specifically said now the only term he knows is stubborn but apparently it's a Cause, derogatory term cuz koni inkonkoni I think inkonkoni is even worse inkonkoni ngithi lesbian ngithi ah no you're asking the wrong oh unfortunately so kumele khona singeke sibe derogatory no let me put it let me put, let me let me help you so What tends to happen is if you're raised in an environment with a certain energy feel mm. that becomes your your point of reference. Okay. So obviously uh, you know the st- studies speak about studies that mm. you find homes without a father. Mm. Uh, boys from homes without a father tend to have a higher testosterone level than than homes with a father from the studies that have been raised. Okay. And that could be because the boy either takes on the father role in the house Mm. or he goes out of the house to go and join a gang or whatever searching for masculine energy your your argument is almost at what, at, at what age Does no it... no i wouldn't know oh okay I, sorry i didn't do a deep dive okay sorry the the point i was trying to make is the the environment plays a factor now okay. if you're the type of boy who's like my mom is my everything mm. you you won't have that you'll be the converse and you'll have a I love cooking. I, I I don't know why I have to do these masculine. What does it mean to be a real man anyways? And they tend to be a, a bit for, for more feminine. So so umfana othanduma wakhe ugcina ebe yi It could be a guy who's yearning for his father who ends up becoming his mom. Hmm. 
You know what I mean? Buzzword deep, bro. Um, I wanted to circle back yeah. to the decision making mm. because you and I have spoken about your mom's privilege in inverted commas yeah. of being the sole decision maker and how we were raised. Right. We don't have that privilege because we have the real privilege of having both parents getting to make decisions. Well, yeah. more you than me. I mean, uh, my privilege has been eroded over time. Mm. That was where the question was going. Do you think it's better to have and this is not two parents living in a household discussing things. Mm. The The question is more two parents not living together, co-parenting, mm. passing the kids on and, and versus a single parent and, and your personal opinion on which you think might be better for a child's development. Having mom that gets to make all the decisions. I can mm. visit dad, but dad just contributes money and I visit mm. him for nice times and for education. But mom chooses my school fees, my, the school I go to, the what, what, the what, what. Versus co-parenting where you're like, no, I'd like my child to go here to an African mm. school. It's like, no, they'll definitely go to an English. No, I don't want my kids going to church. Mm. No, my kids are not only going to go to church. They're going to be the usher mm-hmm. at the church, you know. And then there's that there's that thing, co-parenting where you're trying to do the 50-50 mm. versus single parenting. And not in the extreme where the other parent is absent. Yeah. But where the one parent gets to make the bulk yeah, of the decisions. I, I, I think two loving parents will always beat the one loving parent. Um Again, we're talking about co-parenting in a sense where they're always fighting each other and Munyo wants to... No, just decision-making. Yes, just Not two, fighting or not fighting. Two parents, they both love their child. They both want what's best for their child and they are respectful in making these decisions. I think that will always beat the one loving parent. Oh, I disagree. But this is why I said like we can discuss it on another platform because mm. it might be layered. And yeah, it comes with late. other aspects of, of co-parenting. Mm. We're just hitting, yeah, we're hitting the top soil of it. The, the reason we're having this chat and the one thing that was really important for me is mm. my sadness in the fact that I've been forced to compromise the type of parenting I wanted for mm. my children. Mm. Everyone has wishes for their kids, mm. in particular for the boys, not so much the girls. Mm. I had a wish to raise really strong, really smart, really dynamic boys, mm. of which my boys, chances are they're going to turn into that, but not the way I wanted. I mean, yeah. you look at where we are now, at our ages, mid to late 30s, mm. where we're now looking at an Andrew Tate, Joe Rogan, Jocko Willink. It's Willink. Something like that. Um, we look at these guys and you're like, I don't want my kids to learn some of these things later. Mm. I want them to learn it earlier. They can keep the choir and the band and the softness and the cooking, mm. but I want to add this other layer, which I didn't have, which I had to yearn for later. And I had to work so hard to scrape for where I'm, over gymming, over masculine, going mm. to the shooting range more than I'm probably supposed to go to, mm. yearning to try and catch up on my masculinity. Mm. And I'm also trying to make so much money to kind of compensate where if it had been more balanced and I find the Afrikaans community, at least the, the better part of the Afrikaans community, mm. there is an amazing balance. Mom is mom. She shouts at Yaku, Yaku, Khan, what, what? She's like, come here, my see, and she kisses him. She mm. washes his what, what? Yaku's like, Spirally for my mom. Mm. She loves me. She's soft. She's taught me what a good woman is. Yeah. But in happy time is like, Yaku, come here, Sian. And the time is there, like, fucking tackle him. Mm. He's there at the rugby. He's telling him where to stand, how to tackle harder. Mm. They're going hunting. They're going camping. They're going to the shooting range. And it's not extreme and you're not catching up and you're not. And and they go to the farm on the weekend and then they go with mom to church on Sunday and they, they have the Sunday course. But it's so nicely balanced that by the time the child turns 18, 21, 25, mm. he's a well-balanced man. He knows how to look after his little daughter. He knows how to look after his little son and be firm. And he doesn't have all of these dynamics that we're trying to deal with. And for me, then I wanted to add that layer of, of I wouldn't call it Jewish culture, but what we kind of see from the Jewish community of... And the Muslim community as well. Let's add the Muslim yeah. community where <coughs> we live in a money world. Mm. almost all of us live number one we live in denial that we're going to die no one talks about it openly like you Mm. know you'll die and from birth you need to start prepping for your death Mm. the other thing is we live in this denial like why do you go to school Mm. oh because it's such a great school and they're no why we're going to school because because to be fully honest if school didn't tell you that at some point you'll end up making money or it's going to be the stepping stone Many people, if if companies and jobs were like, yo, if you have school, unfortunately, we won't give you money. Nah, people people take their kids out mm. of school tomorrow. Mm. So 
if money is the thing that gets to decide the school you go to, mm. the type of healthcare you have, the type of partner you get to choose, the place you get to live, mm. the quality of food you eat, if if it's something that causes your parents to fight and get divorced, if it's something that is the reason that girl doesn't like you, mm. the reason you dress in the clothes you do, if it's so important in society, why is it not one of the things that kids are integrated to learn from preschool? Along with things like sports or, or exercise, health. Like, mm. if my health is so important, why do I only start speaking about health at 25? Mm. Think of going vegan. Oh, do you know that there's carbs? Why were you not discussing carbs in grade one? Mm. Why were you not aware of sugar as a drug? But you want to discuss it later when you could have from an early age be like, yo, I remember my dad used to tell me all the time that, you know, if you're going to have some fizzies, dilute it with some liquid. I remember that my mom was like, look, you've used your brain. I'm sure it's burning. Go use the rest of your body. Go run outside. Go lift some weights. It's not just about your brain, my boy. You have to holistic learning. I, I, I think and then I, add when money I, as a, when as I, a when What you're saying topic. is that it sounds like best of both worlds because when you speak about the Afrikaans family, they're they reading off a template and they're doing it like this. You know, the, you, the, you, the top Afrikaans families. Yes. I need to be specific. Yes. They are, they are you, at the bottom, it's quite you, bad. You want this and at the same time, you want to go and venture into a world where there's layers and layers of deepness. You know, because the way that you're thinking doesn't fit into an Afrikaans template if you're an Afrikaans person. You know, they say, don't question this. This belongs to Jesus. It's Jesus's thing. Don't belong. This, don't question this. This is mama and papa things. Mm. Leave it there. Whereas when you want to unpack it. And I think the reason why me and you struggle is because we can't live in, in templates. The reason why black people are struggling is because they're trying to fit themselves in templates that they know very little about. Mm. Jewish people seem like they've got a template and they're working towards it. Muslim families, the top ones that we're talking about, they've got a template and they live to it, as well as Afrikaans families. Mm. See, now what we need to be doing is actually fixing our template that we've had and living that life. Mm. And until such time where we can do that as black people, so cut and paste, then there's a Muslim, then there's a Mapunu, Mapuna, Pisa, Kabuli, Ganzabim Lome, a Mapunu, Napa, a Machuta, Bona, and a Loco. Comments for 13. So as long as we since I, I cut and paste yeah and dollar, I don't think we will be successful and I think there'll be that anxiety that depression that dissonance that we're seeing with our woke band of black people mm. and all of a sudden things these walls of Jericho just keep seem to be crumbling down based on the bullshit that we're trying to figure it out and me and you if we're not ready we're gonna find ourselves in these deep mental holes as well because now we're going to be like, I want my child to find out who Joe Rogan is. But at the same time, they must know who the African spiritual leaders are. And at the same time, they must know how to farm corn on a field. And at the same time, they must understand what AI looks like and be on a rocket ship with Elon Musk and have this and... and as but for, maybe for, for we need to go talk. through that transition. Yeah, maybe. Give me some Diddy love. I <laughs> no Diddy. Pen and pen. Uh, <laughs> thank you for engaging me, indulging me in your personal sure. things. And yeah, let's let's. You cut my this nails. Chat. You cut my nails. I'm not interested in your nails. I'm Check not interested there. in your nose ring. I'm not interested in all these weird things that you do. They fresh, eh? Blessing at your like. Pen and pen. We out.